Praise the Lord. God bless you on YouTube. Blessings, YouTube. You're my strong tower. God bless you, Instagram. Yes, we're logging on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook Live on tonight. To God be all of the glory. Hallelujah. It's Thursday night. Amen. It is Thursday night, and we are usually not on on a Thursday night, but because I was not able to come on yesterday, we are on tonight. Yes, and there is a word from the Lord. Amen. There is a word from God. And so I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one of you. Once again, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook Live right in the middle. So take the time to share if you will. Invite somebody to this broadcast. I am Apostle Carmen Haywood. I am the proud pastor of PIPW Ministry. God bless you, Dominique. I see you on tonight. Listen, we had a high time in the Lord. What was that, Monday night? Monday was off the chain in the Holy Ghost. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Monday was just like, it was everything, everything that was needed, everything that was necessary. You know, the Lord has spoken, you know, on Monday and blessed you all. And so with that being said, we missed last night. Amen. I was talking to my team, my prayer team, and, you know, a few of the ministers um, in our ministry. And I'm telling you, God is moving mightily by his spirit. Good evening. God bless you, Sister Kashina. God bless you, Sister Relena. I see you all coming on. I see those hearts on tonight. Listen, I'm going to be before you as long as I need to be. But I don't know how long we're going to be on here tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I see y'all hitting those hearts. Come on, as you're coming in, take the time to share. Take the time to invite somebody to this broadcast. There is a word from the Lord. I'm telling you all, there is a word from the Lord, and it's going to all make sense. I want somebody to put into the comments, it's going to all make sense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to write in the comments tonight, it's about to make sense. Everything you're going through, everything you're enduring, some of you are going through hardship right now. It's about to make sense. Glory to God. Sister Sequita, God bless you tonight. Somebody shout, it's about to make sense. Dominique, it's about to make sense. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lakeisha, it's about to make sense. Come on. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. And I got to give God praise in advance. For what he's about to do. Amen. It's about to make sense. I'm telling you, all of it, all of it, all of it, everything you are enduring right now, it's about to make sense. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God told me to tell you all. He said, tell my people that they are about to experience complete restoration. Do you know what complete restoration is? Complete restoration means nothing lacking nothing missing nothing broken come on somebody hallelujah god hey hallelujah is about to put everything back together in your life mm. my lord hallelujah god says he's about to put everything back together to you she said hallelujah glory to god listen god is about to put everything mm. my lord my lord god bless you lisa Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. As we enter into his courts on tonight with thanksgiving, as we enter in, in the beginning of this broadcast, come on, begin to lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. Right in your atmosphere, in your home, in your bedroom, wherever you are. God bless you, Sister Nidra. Hallelujah. Begin to give God praise. Hallelujah. Begin to thank him. Hallelujah. Over your situation. Hallelujah. Begin to magnify your God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, begin, begin, begin. Hallelujah. She said, God bless you, Apostle. Confirmation of what was taught tonight in Bible study. Look at God. Look at God. Already there's a confirmation. And we ain't even, we ain't even get, we ain't even really get started just yet. Hallelujah. But she said it's confirmation of her Bible study tonight. Listen, people of God, I want you all to be greatly encouraged. Hallelujah. Because God's word is true. Do you hear me? Thank you, Jesus. I said God's word is true. Let me take this gum out of my mouth. Y'all know I love gum. You're like apostle. It's like um, 10 o'clock at night. You still chewing gum? Yeah, I'm, I'm still chewing gum. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Sean. She said, let me get my seed in the ground already. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The anointing of God is flowing even now. Hallelujah. And God is about to bless each and every hearer of his word on tonight. Do you hear me? I said, God is about to bless the hearers of his word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, glory to God. God bless you, Deborah, tonight. The word of God says, hallelujah. 
He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. All you got to do is have an ear tonight. That's it. You just need to have an ear. That's it. That's it. And, and what I love about the word of God and what I love about God himself, he didn't say he that has two ears, let him hear. He said he that has, hey, I feel God moving already. He said he that has an ear, that means one. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said all you need is one ear to be able to hear what I'm getting ready to say to your spirit. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because your ear, amen, is a gateway to your heart. It, your ear is a gateway to your spirit. Come on. Hallelujah. So as you hear the word of God, amen, hallelujah. Relena says, someone sow a seed for me tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, as you hear, amen, the word of God, glory to God, it hits your heart. It hits your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we know? Because God is a spirit. And the Bible says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so his word is spirit come on somebody prophecy is spirit yes lord the preach word of god is spirit hallelujah and so when it hits your spirit man hallelujah and it goes way deep down glory to god what happens is as it hits your spirit and you receive what is deposited inside of you then now you receive manifestation glory to god see it's one thing to hear the word but after you hear it you got to do it Come on. So this word is also coming, amen, with prophetic instructions. The word of God is always coming with instructions. Come on, somebody. God always gives us his word, but he gives us his word and he gives us instruction. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Dominique says, I shared the live with my followers. Amen. Amen. Come on, click that share button. Those of you on Instagram tonight, those of you on YouTube tonight, listen, those of you on Facebook live, once again, it's Thursday night and we are usually not on on a Thursday. Let me just slow walk this train. Let me just, let me just bring it on in and bring it on down just for a minute. Hallelujah. Because I feel God moving already. Listen, I am Apostle Carmen Haywood. Some of you may not know me. Amen. But it really doesn't matter at this point. Hallelujah. Because I'm just a vessel of the Lord. Amen. I'm just a servant of God. Amen. I'm just his prophet. That's it. Amen. Glory to God. Come on somebody. And so if you don't know me, it's all right. Amen. As long as you know the spirit of the Lord, hallelujah, that rests in this ministry. Amen. That rests inside of me. That's all that matters. Glory to God. Ha, hallelujah. I see a few of my members that are on. I see y'all PIPW ministry. If you all can share in our ministry group, that would be great. Amen. Come on PIPW ministry. Amen. I need you all to share. Glory to God. Amen. Dominique said, that's my apostle. Amen. To God be the glory. I give God praise. Hallelujah. For all of you. Amen. That follow the ministry. I give God praise. Amen. God bless you, son. Isaiah Washington. Prophet Isaiah there in South Carolina. I'll be in South Carolina soon, son. Amen. So I'll let you know when I'll be there again. Glory to God. But I want to say this. I thank God hallelujah for you all those of you that support the ministry those of you that pray for pipw ministry those of you that are really connected to this ministry amen i thank god for you but let me just lay the foundation tonight because i know this is going to bless about 10 of you that are watching and that can hear me clearly listen there are about 10 of you amen that need to hear this the lord took me back earlier today as I was in prayer it was around the afternoon late afternoon time and I was trying to you know get some things situated and you know work out the rest of my day you know to take me into the evening and so I oftentimes spend time with the Lord in the noonday amen so I began to you know just spend time with God in the afternoon and you know what he did I see you hitting those hearts uh Minister Hattie what the Lord did was he took me back he took me back. This is going to bless 10 of you. Listen, he took me back. I bless you, daughter Chanel. I'm praying for you. I know you just got off your prayer line. Amen. But I'm praying for you, daughter. Listen, and he took me back, Nidra. And I was like, God, why are you taking me back? He said, I have to take you back for you to realize how far I had brought you. I said, okay, God. I said, you know, I, I pretty much understand what's going on. He said, no, I have to take you back. In order for you to understand where you are now, I'm going somewhere. God bless you, um, woman of God, Yolanda. Amen. And, and so God began to take me back. He took me back to the prayer line. Amen. And we started the prayer line March the 10th, amen, of 2010. All right. March the 10th, 2010 is when we started our ministry prayer line. Now, somebody might say that's a long time ago. It is a long time ago. Amen. Come on, somebody. But I thank God for it because we still have our ministry and we still have our prayer line. But that's not why God took me back. 
He said, daughter, I need you to understand. He said, I need you to understand that I have raised you up for such a time as this. Oh, this is going to bless 10 of you. Y'all need to share with your prayer partner. Share with your sister in the Lord. Share with somebody that you care about. Amen. Come on. Share with somebody that needs encouragement tonight. Come on, somebody. It seemed like something just got in my eye. Oh, we're going to get through this word tonight. God bless you, Mother Addie. I see you on. Amen. Listen. And so he took me back, Sister Nidra. And he said, daughter, I need you to realize where I brought you from. I said, yes, Lord. I said, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And as he began to take me back, I bless you all for sharing tonight. He took me back and he said, daughter, you have to remember that even before the prayer line, I processed you. Come on. I'm going somewhere tonight. I'm laying the foundation. He said, even before the prayer line, I processed you. And I was like, okay, God, I'm listening. I'm listening. And as he began to talk to me, he said, and in the process, ooh, this going to bless 10 of you. I'm telling you. He said, in your process, daughter, I have pulled out a yes from you. Ooh, I feel like running around my house. Thank you, Sister Debbie, for sharing. Hallelujah. He said, in your process, before the prayer line, but before the making of the ministry, come on, before the manifestation of the miracles and the signs and the wonders, he said, I had to pull a yes out of you. And I was like, okay, God, I said, but Lord, I love you. He said, no, 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 no. No, he said, you learn to love me. Woo, glory to God in the midst of your suffering. I was like, he said, in the beginning, you didn't really love me. Hey, glory to God, but you gave me a yes. He said, I had to teach you. Oh, y'all not ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Hattie. I'm going to pin this right here. He said, I had to teach you how to love me. He said, the only way, oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, the only way that you learn to love me after I, oh God, after I processed you, it was through your suffering that you learned to love me. It was through your going through your tests and your trials <laughs> that you learned to love me. And I was like, well, Lord, you know, I said, my yes was tied to me loving you. He said, uh-uh. He said, in this walk, hallelujah, he said, in this walk and in this journey, he said, tell my people, hallelujah, that they have to first give me a yes. See, you trying to love God, but that love ain't there just yet because you're not willing to suffer. Who am I talking to tonight? You're not willing to go through the process. You want the process, but you say, okay, God, I want the process, but then you're facing the process. And because you never gave, because you never gave him a real yes, you're wondering why it seems like the bottom has fallen out. You're wondering why it seems like your back is up against the wall. So the first step is you got to give him a yes. See, see being saved and giving God a yes is two different things. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Being saved is just that, being saved. It's a whole lot of saved folk that ain't give God a yes yet. Nidra says me. I'm sorry. Was that Nidra? Was that, who was that? Oh, that was, okay. She said me. Listen, so, so your yes, ah, oh, hallelujah, has nothing to do with your salvation. Come on, somebody. Your salvation, amen, is the fact that you gave God your, your heart and you gave the preacher your hand and you went up to the altar and you said, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to come to God now. I'm going to, you know, get saved now. And, and so I'm going to, you know, give God my heart and give the preacher my hand and, you know, I'm going to confess my sins. I believe that God, you know, died on the cross for me and I believe that he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. I, I'm going to stay right there. So we got past that part. Many of you are saved, but now you got to give God a yes. See, and that yes, hallelujah, has nothing to do with blessings. Come on, that yes to the Lord has nothing to do with healing and deliverance. Come on, that yes to God has nothing to do with what he has done for you this far. The yes to God has everything to do <laughs> With the fact of you falling in love with him. See. Whew, I know that just blessed about 10 of you. Because that's the process. Because guess what? You don't just fall in love with God one time. You fall in love with God over and over and over 
and over and over. Come on, somebody catch it. And over and over and over. Oh, yes, yeah, Sister Latoya. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And over and over. Hallelujah. And that's what builds the relationship. So when the enemy comes in, huh? I feel like running tonight. When the devil comes in, hallelujah, and he begins to tempt you, you begin to say, wait a minute, hold on. I have to remember the one who created me. I got to remember the one who, who put my feet on a solid rock to stand. Wait a minute. I got to remember the one, hallelujah, that raised me up for his glory, not for my glory. I got to remember the one that called me because I didn't call myself, Dominique. I got to remember now. Hallelujah. And so what that does, Sister Lisa, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord, hey, hallelujah, will raise up a standard against the enemy. Some of you are looking for the spirit of the Lord to come, but he wants to be risen in you. Oh, speak Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Some of you are looking for the Lord to knock on your door. He's not going to knock on your door. I tell my church all the time, God is not going to knock on your door. But see, he's going to rise in you. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is going to be. Oh, God, I feel victory tonight. The spirit of the Lord is going to begin to rise in you. But you got to know that the spirit of the Lord is already in you. Hallelujah. But you got to give him a yes now. You got to give him a real yes now. Don't let it be fake because you want a blessing. Come on, somebody. Because how many of you know Matthew 6 and 33? It decrees and declares. It says, but seek ye first. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Seek ye first. Not second, not third, not fourth, not fifth. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says in all these things. God bless you, Sister Mitzi. Hallelujah. And all these things shall be added unto you. But you first got to seek God. And his righteousness. You can't have God without his righteousness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We just can't have God, but we need his righteousness. And we talked about holiness on the other night. And I made so many people mad, even the devil. Oh, y'all not ready. Glory to God. Because that teaching on holiness on Monday was so needed for the body of Christ. But how many of you know righteousness and holiness go hand in hand? Y'all not ready on tonight. Hallelujah. Righteousness and holiness go hand in hand my lord hallelujah i'm gonna say it till it hit your spirit righteousness and holiness let me calm down and bring it on in because i feel god moving even now Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Somebody just begin to thank God. Hallelujah for the moving of his spirit thus far. There is a word from the Lord, people of God. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord and God is speaking even now. He said, he that has an ear. Hallelujah. Let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. This is the time of deposit, say of God. Hallelujah. And many of you think you got it together, but no, you need another prophetic deposit. Pass it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is why God is connecting you to the prophet now. Hallelujah. And if your pastor is a prophet, then you are blessed. If you just sitting under a pastor in this season, I don't know what you're going to get from God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You need a prophetic voice that can hear from heaven now. Hallelujah. To begin to help you in your situation. So God took me back. He took me back. He took me back to that. He took me back before the birthing out. He, he took me back. Hallelujah. I, I, I know it is hot. It's getting hot. It's getting real hot. And my house ain't hot either. I got the air on. Listen, it's hot here in North Carolina. But listen, my house, is, I got the air on, but it's hot right now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The fire. Yes, Lord, the fire of God is here already on tonight. Hallelujah. Some of you may feel the fire of God. And if you feel the fire of God, just lift your hands and thank him for his fire. Because a lot of times God sends the fire. Oh, I'm going to get back to the testimony. A lot of times. Yeah, I'm going to get back to when God took me back. I hear you, Lord. A lot of times God sends the fire to burn up those things that are inside of you that are stopping you from giving God a yes. See, sometimes the fire of God has to come and we get so excited about the fire, but tonight you got to let the Lord burn everything out of you that don't belong. Because some of you got prayers on the altar, but now it's time for your prayers to be answered. But God ain't going to answer your prayers if you won't let him burn everything out of you that is contaminating your spirit. Somebody shout, Lord, send your fire. I'm ready. 
Come on, somebody shout, Lord, I was, hey, Shatanda Baha. Come on, somebody shout, I received the fire. Come on, I was, hey, hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, I received the fire of God. Come on, somebody, it's all in my hands. I don't know if you see it, hallelujah, but I surely feel it. Come on, somebody, in the name of Jesus, the fire, hey, hallelujah, the fire of God, it comes to burn everything out of you that don't belong inside of you. Somebody shout, Lord, send your fire. Come on, hallelujah. The woman of God said it's overdue. It's overdue. It's overdue. Come on, it's overdue. It's overdue. Come on, somebody shout, it's overdue. The fire of God is overdue. Come on, I hear you guys. Some of you know you need the fire. Hallelujah, but you need to be connected to where God is. Come on, somebody. You know you need the fire now to ignite, hallelujah, even the anointing that's inside of you. Because the moment you die, you're going to need a jump start. And that means you're going to need the fire of God, which means you need a prophet, hallelujah, that is on fire for the Lord. Hey, God, the times are changing. We are shifting, people of God. Hallelujah. The church is shifting. Hallelujah. Ministries are shifting. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Many of ministries are shifting to the apostolic and even to the prophetic. Hallelujah. So if you're not in tune with the apostolic or the prophetic, you're going to get left behind. You're going to get left behind. All because you don't quote unquote understand. The Bible says after getting all, get an understanding. And this is the time that we are in. Many people don't understand the move of God. Many people don't understand restoration. They don't even understand revival. But see, when God sends revival, he sends restoration. Come on, somebody. Hey, hallelujah. When God sends revival, hallelujah, he sends, glory to God, rejuvenation. He will rejuvenate your spirit, man. But you got to be connected. You got to be connected. Woo, hallelujah. You got, hey, you got to be connected. Come on, somebody. So even your yes tonight is going to get you back connected to God. Even your yes tonight, hallelujah, is going to get you back connected to the true vine, who is Jesus Christ himself. Oh, my God. It's just like a marriage. Hallelujah. That husband and wife got to dedicate themselves to each other all day long. Hallelujah, which means they got to forgive one another. Come on, somebody. That husband got to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Come on here. And that wife got to submit herself to her husband. Come on, somebody. It's just like a marriage. You got to stay connected in order for that love, hallelujah, to flow, hallelujah, from heart to heart and breast to breast. Come on, somebody, in the name of Jesus, it's the same thing as if your relationship with God matters now. See, a lot of people want to do church, but they don't want to do God. Can I just lay the foundation? I'm not done. I'm still laying down the foundation because God getting ready to build on a foundation tonight, Sister Mitzi, because that's what the people of God need. Some of you need a strong foundation now because you feel like you about to break. You feel like you about to crumble. Hallelujah. And the only way you're going to make it now is with a strong foundation in God. That's it. That's it. If another plague comes and hit this land, you still going to need a foundation with God. If they come and cut your lights off, you still going to need a foundation with God. If they call you and tell you something happened to your child, you still going to need a foundation with God. Come on. You get some bad news over the phone, you're going to need a foundation with God. Come on, you're you going to need a strong foundation. Because the devil is working overtime, saints. And many people are falling and crumbling. Hallelujah. Because of pride. Hey, you don't really want to say something is wrong with you. Come on. No, you better, you better cry out. Hallelujah. You better cry out like David had to cry out. He said, make haste, O God, to deliver me. Psalm 70. He said, make haste, O God, to set me free. Ooh, glory to God. We ain't got time to be being fake Christians and fake church members. And you ain't got time to be faking it till you make it. Come on. It's time to be real. It's time to cry out to God. It's time to give him a real yes this time. 
Hallelujah. And this real yes going to cost you everything. You know, there was a time, and I know Mother Addie is on, and I know, amen, she know about the church mothers. That's why I call her name sometimes. Listen, Mother Addie can, can testify to this. There was a time, amen, when you can say it's going to cost you something. But now it's going to cost you everything. We don't have as much time as we think we do. Come on, Sister Kashina. You know Holy Ghost is speaking the truth tonight. And so many people think they got a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time. So when God is telling you to do something, you better do it. When God is telling you to get up, you better get up. When God is telling you to go here, you better go here. When God tells you to sow, you better sow. Because you have no idea what's coming the next day. You have no idea what's coming the next week. If the Lord shall delay his return, you have no idea what's coming next month. Woo! Hallelujah. So you got to obey God now. Hallelujah. You don't have as much time as you think you do. And see, there was a time, saints, where we could say, oh, I'll go to church next week. Maybe. There was a time when we used to say, maybe I'll get on the prayer line this week. No, I'll wait till next week. I got to get me some rest. I got to do some overtime at work. I got to take care of the kids. No, we in a time right now, baby. Let me tell you something. You better learn how to multitask. You better learn how to go to church and still clean your house and still cook dinner and still get ready. Still get your kids ready and your house ready for the next week. You better learn how to multitask. Come on. Prayer line going on. You better learn how to get on that prayer line and listen and mute your phone and still hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto you. Because one Sunday you might miss in church and you might miss a whole move of God that was attached to your purpose. That was a, hey, hallelujah, that was attached to your destiny. Come on, this is the time we're in. Somebody shout, this is the time we are in. And so many people think they got a lot of time. You got people now saying, I'm going to drag my feet. Well, you go ahead and want to keep dragging your feet and God's going to give you assignment to the next person. Hmm. Come on. You, you keep dragging your feet. God gave you instructions and told you what to do, whether he told you directly or whether he told you through your leader. So he gave you directions and gave you instruction, but you're still dragging your feet. And many people sitting here saying, OK, God, I need a blessing. He say, OK, your blessing is attached to obedience. God bless you, Vandis Arlene. Thank you for sowing your seed tonight. I see y'all sowing early. Y'all like, listen, let me get my blessing of restoration. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your, your next blessing is, is attached to your obedience. No obedience, no blessing. You can say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all day long. You can listen to worship music all day long. You can act like you in his presence all day long. But if there's no... If there's no obedience, then there's no blessing. Deuteronomy 28 is very clear. 1 through 14, it says, if you obey the commands of the Lord, you shall receive this. You shall receive that. You shall be blessed going in. You shall be blessed coming out. You shall be blessed in the city. You shall be blessed in the field. But when you get to verse 15, Deuteronomy 28 and 15, all the way up to 68, it ain't nothing but curses. I said, wait a minute, God, why you got more curses at the tail end than you got blessings? He said, that's because, hey, shatanda baha. He said, that's because in the beginning I got the blessings and people still don't listen to my word. He said, so I got to take them to the middle and the tail end of the chapter, praying and hoping that they get it. Come on, because so many people, they would want, they would want more blessings. Come on, Sister Kashina. They would want the blessings to be from verse 1 all the way to 50. Then they want the curses to be from 50 to, to 68. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. God, hey, Shatan Baha. He said, no, there's more curses in that chapter because my people don't listen. He said, it's very few that listen. He said, it's very few that obey. So God took me all the way back. He took me back to the beginning before the prayer line had burst out. And some of you may not know, but I'm going to give you the testimony and I'm going to try to give it to you in 60 seconds because I got a lot to unpack tonight. So the testimony is in stands. I was on a prayer line. This was before our prayer line burst out. I was on a prayer line with two other prophetess and God told me to help the woman of God. 
So she reached out to me. Her name was Prophetess Lisa. She reached out to me. And this was years ago. This was many, many. This was over 12 years ago, over 13 years ago. So she reached out to me and she was like, Prophetess, can you help me with my prayer line? She said, I just need you to get on one or two nights and, you know, just pray and release the word of the Lord. I said, sure. Not knowing that God had me in preparation. This is going to bless about five of you. Because if you can't obey the preparation in somebody else's ministry, then you ain't going to be able to fulfill the assignment for the ministry that God has called you to. Catch that. Catch that. Amen. I need somebody to catch that. Come on. Obedience goes a long way. So God took me back. And he said, daughter, just as you have helped that prophetess, he said, if you notice throughout the years, I sent different prophets to help you. And I said, yes, Lord. So as he took me all the way back, I had to really take everything in. It was a little emotional. And the reason why I was emotional, because I began to see the handiwork of God. I had already knew that God was moving in PIPW ministry. I had already knew that many souls got saved, healed, delivered, and set free. I had already knew that even in our revivals and in our conferences, that God was just sweep through the place and, you know, and have his way. Amen. I, I had already knew that. But it wasn't until God took me all the way back. And he said, daughter, I need you to remember where I brought you from. And so I'm speeding up until today. The Lord began to speak to me. He said, daughter, don't ever forget the assignment that is on your life. I'm speaking to about 12 of you. He said, don't ever forget your mandate. Whew. He, he said, don't, oh God, mm, somebody's ministry is going to be rebirthed out tonight. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Ooh, hallelujah. Some, somebody, mm, Jesus, I, yes, Lord, I hear you. Somebody's ministry is being rebirthed tonight. Ooh, the devil tried to kill you. Ooh, I feel it. I feel a re, mm, I feel a rebirthing right now. Ooh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you going to feel your baby kick again. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Ooh, yes, Lord. Yes, I feel it in the realm of the spirit. My God, tonight, that was quick. That was fast. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha hey, Shatanda Baha. Ooh, glory to God. Some of you, your belly going to get real hot. And some of you going to feel like something is kicking in your belly. It's, it's turning. Hey, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. And those of you that's coming to the women's conference, by the time you get to the conference, you're going to birth out your baby. Ooh, hallelujah. And the conference is next month. Come on. But your baby is coming alive tonight. Hey, God. Ooh, Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give the Lord praise. Come on. Hey, hallelujah. Give God praise because some of you knew, amen, that you were, ca oh God, I hear you. Some of you knew that you was carrying a baby. Hallelujah. Some of you knew that you was carrying a ministry. Some of you already knew it and the devil was trying to kill your baby. Hallelujah. This is why you got to understand that when you are connected to a midwife and I'm talking to a prophetic midwife, what happens with the midwife, hallelujah, the midwife can recognize that you are pregnant. Oh my God. And the spiritual midwife, hallelujah, can not only just recognize that you are pregnant, amen, but the spiritual midwife will tell you what you need for your baby to survive. Your spiritual midwife will begin to tell you, you ain't drinking enough water. You ain't getting enough exercise. Come on. You, you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing to, to cause circulation in your natural body. Hallelujah. And also circulation in your spirit, man. Come on here. Hallelujah. So, hey, God, so you got to do some spiritual exercises. Come on. You, you got to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord that rests inside of you so that your baby can begin to leap again. Huh? Somebody shout, I won't miscarry this time. Huh? Somebody shout, hey, Shatanda Baha. Somebody shout, I won't miscarry this time. Hallelujah. I'm going to come to full term with my baby. Hallelujah. My spiritual baby, my ministry. Hallelujah. Ain't going to die. And ain't no witch going to kill it either. Hey, God. Because you got some witches and warlocks trying to kill your baby. See, anytime a witch shows up, Oh, I got some revelation tonight. It's going to be real heavy. Anytime a witch shows up, the witch is showing up to kill your baby, which is your assignment. Oh, y'all thought witches showed up just because? Oh, you thought you thought a witch showed up just because? <laughs> so some of you thought, oh, a witch showed up because they just don't like you. 
No, 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 no. The witch shows up because the witch is trying to kill, uh, abort the assignment that's on your life. Come on. The witch comes to cause frustration. Come on. Hallelujah. A, a witch and a witch spirit comes to sabotage. That's why you got to be careful. I see y'all sowing tonight. I'm going to pray over these seeds in a minute, but God is already moving upon your seed. Hey, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So anytime a witch shows up or a witchcraft spirit, or even, oh God, I hear you. Even a warlock spirit. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be very careful. Dominique says, my, di my dance ministry will not fail in Jesus' name. It will come to full term. That's what I'm talking about. Come on here. She probably ain't dancing a long time. Hey, hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. So those of you, yes, Lord, I hear you. That have ministries. You got to start speaking over your baby. You got to start speaking over your ministry. And that's what God did today when he took me back. He said, daughter, I, God bless you, Pastor Kim. Hallelujah. He said, I, I took you back. Hallelujah. Because I had to remind you how many times you had to speak life over your baby. Hallelujah. He said, the ministry is only going forth. Hallelujah. Because every time a witch came and tried to sabotage oh my god and try to come against the ministry he said daughter i put it inside of you hallelujah endurance power to keep on going and to keep on standing and it had nothing to do with the witch or the witchcraft it had everything to do with me save god and so we're here today all because the witchcraft didn't work Whew. Hallelujah. Evangelist Arlene, you are here. Hey, Shatanda Baha. You are here today because the witchcraft did not work. Do you hear me? And then God took me back, Sister Mitzi. This going to bless you real good because I see you preaching the word of God. Not where you are, though, but I see you preaching the word of God. <laughs> this going to bless you, Sister Mitzi, and a few of you that are listening under the sound of my voice. Whew. Let me Let me get it out. I, I got to get it out. Huh. The Lord took me back to the very first message that I preached. Now, mind you, had my own ministry, but I sat under a pastor. Listen, I was obedient. See, I wasn't like some of y'all. You know, you got a ministry and you don't want to sit nowhere. You don't want to be obedient. No, I really, I never wanted to leave my leader, to be honest. Come on, somebody. I never wanted to leave my church. So all of y'all that leave churches and church hop, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it, but, but God would not let me leave. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Until I was completely birthed out. Why am I sharing this? Because as the assignments came, Sister Nidra, I was still sitting under my pastor. Still had the prayer line. Somebody need to hear me in the Holy Ghost. Still had the prayer line. Still was doing counseling. Come on. Still was ministering to people. And I was still walking in the prophetic. Very heavy. Even in my beauty salon. Come on. And still, I was still bringing souls to Christ. But let me say this. My very first message that I preach and my pastor allowed me to go out and minister. I was, I was, it was a very few ministers. It was like three of us in, in my former church where we were able to go out and preach where my pastor had trusted me to be able to go out and minister and knew that I was going to come back and I wasn't going to be looking cuckoo and crazy. <laughs> Somebody gonna catch that in a minute because some of y'all go to these churches and these ministries and you yeah, you come back looking real crazy And then your pastor got to pray all that stuff off of you my, my pastor trusted me She said prophetess Carmen. I trust you and I know that wherever you go. You're going to carry the integrity of God Oh, that's a word for some of y'all Come on, you, you, you got to listen. It, it's kind of like when, when you enter in the building, your leader is entering the building. Oh, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody in the name of Jesus, because you have the you have the anointing. Amen. That also rests upon your leader. So when, why are we going here tonight? So when your leader, amen, tells you that it's okay for you to go out on an assignment, what happens is you still, you still carry the spirit of your leader. So if your leader is not a busybody, you ain't a busybody. If your leader is not a gossiper, you ain't in the corner gossiping with somebody before the service and after the service. Come on here. 
Amen. If your leader don't take up an offering, uh, amen, they might take up an offering, but they might not keep the offering. So if your leader gives back the offering, then what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to give back the offering too. Come on. Whatever your leader does, come on. I don't know why Holy Ghost is talking like this because some of y'all get ready to get some engagements. And you need to, hey, Shatan Baha, you need to have the spirit of your leader. Who am I talking to tonight? What is going on here, Pastor Kim? <laughs> Jesus have mercy. Hallelujah. And so what happens? Hey, Shatanda Baha. Glory to God. What, yes, Lord, I hear you. What happens is as you go out, amen. Of course, there's an anointing on your life. Of course, you have your own spiritual gift, but you have been birthed out under that leadership. And so I remember the first message that God gave me. And he, I'm telling y'all, he took me back today and it blew my mind. It blew my mind. He took me all the way back. It took me, he took me all the way back. And he said, daughter, do you remember the first message? And I said, yes, I remember. And it's actually on YouTube. <laughs> so if y'all go to my old page, it's Prophetess Carmen Bryant, which was my maiden name. All right. I'm no longer married. I still got Haywood, but I'm no longer married. Amen. So my, my last name is Bryant. That's a whole nother message for a whole nother time. Because if y'all see me change to Bryant and all my stuff change to Bryant, that is my maiden name. Okay. But if you go to YouTube and you type in Prophetess Carmen Bryant, you will see that very first message. I think I had on a white road. And I'm sharing this because that first message, and it's going to bless 12 of y'all. The first message was entitled, The Devil Tried, But It Didn't Work. That was my very first message that I preached out. <laughs> and God gave it to me the night before. And then he sealed it the day that I had to go preach out. Come on, gave me the scriptures and everything. Come on here. Why am I sharing this? Because sometimes you might get an engagement two weeks from then, and then you try to go and prepare a message. That's not how you do it. You have to wait. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. See, this was the teaching I got. You have to wait until the Holy Spirit gives you something to give to the people because you have no idea who's going to be there, but God does. You have no idea, ah, oh, glory to God, what you're going to face when you get there, but God does. Come on. So he will give you the exact words for his people. See, that's the teaching I sat under. Amen. There were times my pastor would call us up to preach on a Friday night. And let me, let me just encourage the ministers. My pastor would call some of us up and you ain't even know you was coming up to preach anything. They, she would call your name. She would have one of the ministers call your name and you had to get up. Then you got 12 minutes. Unpack the message. And after a while, if you was too much in your Bible, if you was like this, scrambling, talking about, um, 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 praise the Lord, everybody. Um, 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 the Lord, the Lord want me to, she would come up and close your Bible. She'd do just like this. She'd get up, shut the Bible. Okay. Now what is this? Hey, hallelujah. What is the spirit of the Lord saying? Come on, say loud. We're going to pause and think about that for a minute. <laughs> We're going to get the restoration in a second, but y'all need this. Some of y'all need this because God, even in your season of restoration, he's going to birth you out. And some of you are getting ready to do ministry. Come on. Hallelujah. I know what I see in the spirit. I pray for the church and not just my church. I pray for the church as a whole. That's why I can come on Facebook live and I can minister to people that I've never seen. Come on, I, I can minister to those of you that I've never met. And you're like, how, how does woman know my mail? I know your mail, hey, hallelujah, because I'm in God's face concerning you. I'm in God's face concerning his church. Come on, that's why the attacks are so great, Brother Chris Smith. I go through H-E double hockey sticks. Y'all don't understand. Hallelujah, come on here. Somebody may say, Apostle Carmen, you highly anointed. No, nah, I, am, nah, I am, but I'm not. Okay, this is God's anointing that rests on this ministry. And there's a high price that has to be paid for it too. Come on, I said there's a high price. Hey, glory to God. There has to be, hey, Shatan Baha. There's a high price that has to be paid for it too. I remember one of my ministers said to me, and I'm still going back to the prayer line. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I remember one of my ministers said to me a long time ago. They said, Prophetess, how are you able to pray for somebody over a phone that you've never seen but you're able to pray their deliverance and they get delivered over a phone. I remember they would say to me, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. And even though even some of the ministers before they became ministers, 
in my ministry, they got delivered over the phone. I'm not bragging. I'm listen. I'm boasting on God because his hey, Shatanda Baha, his anointing ah oh, is just that rich. Come on, I see Sister Sequita hitting those hearts. Come on, because she was birthed out on the prayer line. Come on, she got delivered on the prayer line. Listen, it's so many people that thank God for the beginning. But sometimes you need to understand the beginning to know how we got to this place. Come on. Some, oh, God, who am I talking to? Sometimes you got to know the beginning of a matter to know how you got to this place. Come on, Sister Latoya, I see you on Instagram. Somebody say, I'm a part of PIPW ministry now. I joined about a year ago, but you have no idea. Hey, hallelujah. The test, the trial, the adversity, the sabotage, the slander. Come on, this ministry had to go through and still standing. Woo, hallelujah. I feel like shouting right there. If we was in church, I'd tell the church, come on, y'all. It's time for a praise break. Hallelujah. Hey, because we're still standing. See, you can only get to complete restoration only when you stay in. Come on. She said, what is the number to the prayer line? We're going to start the prayer line back up after the women's conference. Come on. Hallelujah. Because I need some sharp shooters on the prayer line this time. Hey, hallelujah. Did you hear me? For those of you that God is getting ready to birth out in your ministry, we're going to start the prayer line back up after the women's conference. That's what God gave me. But I need some sharp shooters. Come on. Hallelujah. It's no way you can come from a conference, Sister Nidra, and the title of the conference is Armed and Dangerous. Hallelujah. And you don't go through warfare. Hallelujah. And women are going to come and be birthed out in their ministries. Are you serious? Ooh, see, I understand the warfare. Ha, huh? Because I understand the mandate. Hey, God, did you hear me? Hallelujah. I said, hey, Shatan Baha, I understand the level of warfare. Because I understand the mandate. I understand what's getting ready to take place. Oh, glory to God. And it's so prophetic. It's so prophetic. It's so prophetic. The move that's taking place right now. The adversity that's taking place right now for many of you. It's so prophetic. But you got to tap into it now. You got to tap. Hey, You got to tap into it now. Come on, somebody. So let's go back a little bit. So God took me back to the prayer line and he took me back to, you know, even after the prayer line birthed out and how my pastor had trusted me, even though I had a prayer line ministry and God was moving in that ministry, I didn't tie that ministry to my church I was in. Catch it. Because see, some of you have a ministry, but you're trying to tie it in to your church where you are. No, 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 no. You don't never bring your ministry to the church that you are at unless your pastor gives you that right let me give you an example because i had a prayer line i would not give my prayer line number out to the saints that sat under my leader the only way i gave that number out can i get can i can i give you a prophetic secret the only way that i gave that number out minister tanya hitting those hearts because she know i'm telling the truth the only way i gave that number out is if my pastor said it was okay Because I understood. Come on. Because some of them were not even strong enough to sit under her. So if you're not. Oh, see, y'all going to catch it in a minute. If they were not strong enough to sit under my former pastor, under my pastor, then why would I give them? If they're not listening to her, then why in the world would I? Five of y'all going to catch it. Come on. Because I didn't come. Oh, y'all not ready. I didn't come there for that. <laughs> come on seven of y'all just caught that in the realm of the spirit that's right honoring leadership i learned it i know it i, I listen I, I i wake up <laughs> with it i go to bed with it why hallelujah because glory to god i learned it but not only did i learn it it became me see so, so we can't be just leaders even in our local churches you have to be a leader outside of your church to where your integrity that is in your leadership, that is in, in the place that you are in, that integrity got to go all the way to the next church and the next church and the next church you visit and the next fellowship you go to and the next conference you at and the next prayer breakfast and wherever else God leads you. Come on. Because many of you are about to be birthed out. The Lord gave me that. Sons and daughters, hallelujah. Some of you are my sons and daughters, but 
I'm talking to those of you, amen, that are on this broadcast. Your leaders are about to birth you out, sons and daughters. It's a men on this live. Your ministry, hallelujah, is getting ready to birth out, save God. That's why he's bringing you to a place of complete restoration. Glory to God. We get ready to get into the scripture in just a minute. This is why he's bringing you all to a place of complete restoration. Nothing lacking, nothing broken, nothing missing. Come on. Some of you desired this place for a long time. And it's going to require your yes. It's going to require your true love for God now. Because you're going to realize ministry is not attached to what God gives you. Ministry is attached to the souls that he requires for you to be over. Catch the revelation. Ministry has nothing to do with blessings. Come on. Because even as you're ministering, you're dying to yourself. It has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with God's people. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And guess what? Your crown that you, your blessing is the crown that you're going to receive in heaven has nothing to do with your earthly blessings. Come on. So you can minister and somebody can put a hundred dollar bill in your hand. Okay. Thank you. But I, I don't want that. It's okay. Matter of fact, thank you for what you gave me. I'm going to give it to somebody else. Come on here. Hallelujah. Somebody may say, well, I can't take an offering. You can do whatever you want to do. But those, these are earthly blessings. Catch the revelation. You want your crown. Huh? Glory to God. The Bible says laid up for us. Woo. Come on here. Somebody shout, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Laid up for us is a crown of righteousness. Ah. Come on. And so as God began to take me back, and some of you know my testimony, if you're close to me, you know what I'm talking about and where I'm going. I remember we were on a prayer line one night. And God, I was just like, I was caught in the spirit and my eyes was closed. I was sitting at the dining room table. I'll never forget. And I closed my eyes and I saw a crown. And as I saw this crown, I think another prophet was on the line prophesying or something. The spirit of God was moving on the line. And I know I wasn't talking because I was just sitting there with the phone like this. And before me came a crown. God showed me a crown. And this crown was so beautiful, Sister Mitzi. When I tell you it was so beautiful, it had so many jewels in it. And I shared it with my ministry team at that time. You know, and that's why I said some of you that's close to me, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And so God showed me the crown. And I said, God, what is that? He said, that's your crown. But, but let me just say this. The whole front of the crown had jewels in it. And the back of the crown had like two or three jewels that was missing. And I said, God, why, why was there some missing jewels in the back of the crown? And that's when God spoke to me. He said, daughter, keep working. <laughs> Woo, somebody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, yes, Lord. He said, daughter, hey, shatanda baha. Hallelujah. He said, hey, yes, Lord. He said, daughter, keep working. That's why I tell people all the time, you won't leave here until it's your time. I tell some people, I got work to do. The devil can make threats all day long because the devil can't take me out. Come on here. The devil can't take you out. Come on. When you got work, hey, shatan the Baha'i. When you got work to do, you got work to do. Come on. You just need to know your assignment. You need to know your kingdom assignment. You need to know your purpose. Come on. So even when God sends you somewhere, he's sending you for a reason. But if you sit on your hands and you think you're cute and you think you got time and you like, okay, God, you know, whenever you're going to do it, I'm ready. He said, no, you waiting on me and I'm waiting on you. That's another part of the testimony. There were times that I was like, okay, God, what's next? He said, do it. I already showed you what's next. So sometimes God will show you what's next, but it's up to you to now put it into action. A lot of times we'll say, Lord, I'm waiting on you. Lord, I'm waiting on you. Lord, I'm waiting on you. God, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you, Lord. And then you talk to somebody, you know, and you know, you, you're going through your problems and you're going through the motions and they like, what's going on with you? How's your life? And you're like, I'm just waiting on God. Come on, that's, that's something that all the saints say. I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord. Okay, now what if he was waiting on you? 
<laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. She said, ouch, fix it, Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. See, a lot of times we'll sit there and we like, I'm just waiting on God. You have a conversation with your girlfriend and you like, mm-hmm. And she like, girl, you know, God doing this and God doing that. And then she come to you and be like, what's, what's the Lord doing for you? Oh, I, he ain't doing nothing right now. He's sustaining me. He keeping me. You know, I got a roof over my head. I got clothes on my back. My kids is good. We all right. And God say, uh-uh, I got so much more for you. You're sitting on your hands. That's the problem. You're sitting there waiting on God. And God is saying, okay, I'm waiting. Hey, Shatana Baha'i. He says, I'm waiting on you now. So you got a lot of people that's called to ministry that's just waiting on God. <laughs> Woo! Speak, Holy Ghost. Jesus, have mercy. Somebody shout, that's me, that's me. If that's you tonight, just hit those hearts. And you know God is waiting on you. Come on, you, you know the Lord is waiting on you. Come on, Kashina. That's why he get ready to relocate you. Hallelujah. He said, daughter, you've been sitting on your hands for too long. Huh? Glory to God. And how long are you going to let the devil run circles around your head and stay in the same place that you are in? How long are you going to let the devil torment you? How long are you going to let the devil speak in your ear gate when God is supposed to be speaking to you? Come on. Come on. How long? Somebody just put in the comments, how long? How long? How long? She said, way too long. Come on, some of you were connected to the wrong people. They ain't had nothing to do with your destiny. They ain't had nothing to do with your purpose. And that's why God severed the tie. He severed the tie because they had nothing to do with your purpose or destiny. Come on, how long? So let's go back a little bit. Let's continue to go back. Because God took me back today and I got to take you back with me. Because <laughs> he took me back. And as I'm going back, some of you going back to your life too. Come on, think, think back. Think back the last 10 years, 15 years, and how you got to the place that you're in right now, whether you're in the will of God or whether you're outside of the will of God. Amen. God said he was going to restore many of you on tonight, get you back, back to a place of complete restoration for him. Come on. Amen. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So God took me back. All right. So now you at the first time when I had to, we're at the first time when I had to go out and minister and you know, that assignment was awesome. Amen. And my, my, my sister in Christ, Prophet Terry, amen. She went with me um, on that assignment. You know, my pastor had trusted us to go and, um, you know, God moved and he had his way. Amen. And when I came back, you know, my leader was like, how did everything go? I said, it went great. I said, God moved and, you know, to God be the glory. She said, okay. She said, now I can trust you to do another assignment. You see? See, you have to be proven first. Hmm. Somebody may say, no, as long as I'm proven by God, I'm all right. Mm -mm. If you look all throughout your Bible, there were leaders. Come on. And then there were successors. What does that mean? The, those that had leaders in their life, they had to submit to authority and to leadership in order to go to the next level. It's the same thing today. So if you have a leader in your life and you're not submitted, where do you think you're going? How can you grow? Where, where are you going to go? Come on. How can you grow? You cannot grow. Come on. You can't grow. I don't care how, how much you try to fake it till you make it. You're not growing. And one thing about the enemy, he loves when you're by yourself. Let me just help about 10 of you right here. The enemy loves when you're by yourself. He loved when you in solitude. You know how you isolate yourself. Some of y'all isolate yourself. Talking about I'm spending time with God when really that's not the time for you to steal away and isolate yourself. Do you know isolation, speak Holy Ghost, brings about torment? Do you know when you isolate yourself, the devil pounces on you and plays mind games? And now you sitting there like, don't nobody care about me and... Don't nobody know what I'm going through. And now you having a pity party as you and the devil. And he's sitting there looking at you and you looking at him. He talking to you and you talking back to him. Because you're not binding his works. Come on. You're siding with him. So what happens is he hears everything that comes out your mouth. You on the phone with your girlfriend. You on the phone with your guy friend. And guess what? Everything, ah, everything that you're saying, he's sitting there listening to everything. 
Because see, he's not all knowing. So this is why the devil don't like me. Because I hate him. Listen, Satan is not all knowing. Only God is all knowing. Catch the revelation. I want you to write it in your notes. Those of you taking, night, take, taking notes tonight. Satan does not know everything. I want you to remember this. He only knows what comes out of your mouth. Selah. We're going to pause and think about that for a minute. So the more you talk, the more he knows. The devil is not in your brain. <laughs> he ain't that smart. He sits there and listens to you. The enemy will study you. The enemy will watch you. Come on. Come on. Come on. The moment you having a pity party and the moment the spirit of sadness is on you and now depression, he like, oh, I got him. Oh, I got her. And then you don't want to tell nobody because now the spirit of shame has entered in. Come on. Oh, somebody shout, it's layers to this thing. That's why when you, hey, shatan da baha. That's why when you get delivered and you purging up all those spirits that got inside of your spirit is more than one. That's why it's more than one. As soon as you think one is done, that's it. Then here come another one. Uh, uh, uh. And next thing you know, you're going through deliverance. Because all those spirits done piled on top of each other. Come on. And I try to help my members as much as possible. I try to stop it. But they don't listen. Some of y'all don't listen. <laughs> come on. Some of you don't. Hey, Shatan Nabaha, you don't listen. I can see another one piling on top of another one. I'm like, listen, the Lord is saying... And if you don't listen to that instruction, here come another spirit. Now here come rebellion. Once rebellion come in, oh, you in trouble. Because rebellion, oh, we shifting right here. Let's shift in the Holy Ghost. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now you start working witchcraft. What is witchcraft? Straight rebellion. Disobedience. <laughs> now you thinking that your way is right. And the devil telling you too, you can do whatever you want to do. Don't why you, you ain't got to listen to nobody. Who are they? Who is he? Who is she to be telling you something? You got your own mind. <laughs> and that's when the Bible should open up and you should read when God said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because God would not have you operating in manipulation. Come on. God will not have you operating in rebellion. Huh? Glory to God. Those are works of the flesh and those are works of the devil. That's right. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Help me teach this message tonight. She said he's a deceiver. He's a great deceiver. Deception is his number one tool. Come on. He loves to deceive. He's the great deceptor. Come on. That's why God said, I will not leave you ignorant of Satan's devices. Ah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. God said in his word, he said, I will not leave my people ignorant of Satan's devices, which means God is going to reveal to you what's going on. But it's up to you to listen. Ah, It's up to you to take it all in and say, Lord, I hear you. Whether he's speaking directly to you or whether he's speaking to you through your leader. Come on. Come on. Somebody shout obedience is greater than the sacrifice. Come on. Obedience is greater than a sacrifice. Do you know how many people would love to give a sacrifice instead of being obedient? Uh, there are so many people that would say, apostle, I'll give a sacrifice, but I don't want to be obedient. Catch the revelation. Come on. Some of you tell your pastor, I'll give a sacrifice, but I obedience. No, nah, I ain't trying to obey. Obey for what? Because when I become obedient, that means I need to live a disciplined life. Ah. Come on here. When God calls us to a place of obedience, that means now we have to be disciplined. And if you've never been disciplined in your childhood, <laughs> it's hard for you to be disciplined now that you're following God. If your parents, oh, here we go. If your parents couldn't tell you what to do when you were younger and you didn't listen to nobody, 
Now you in the body of Christ. You think you think you're just going to have the spirit of obedience just like that? No. That same rebellion is going to kick in. Come on, that same spirit is it, going to kick in. I don't care if you try to hide it. <laughs> and then when you see it, you're going to say, wait a minute, I don't even like this. I, I don't like this spirit because it, it, it's causing me to stumble and it's, and it, it's causing me to fall. It's causing me to retreat and it's causing me to go backwards instead of going forward. Come on. And when you get to that place, that's when you cry out to God. I just gave y'all a golden nugget. Come on. When you get to that place, that's when you cry out to the Lord. That's when you got to fight for your salvation. You got to fight for your healing. You got to fight for your deliverance. You got you to gotta fight to be set free. Come on. Amen. That's when you got to fight for it now. Because you got to remember that the devil's job is to do what? John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to kill and to steal and to destroy. So Satan is always coming to do three things, believers. He don't just come to do one. He comes to do three. He comes to kill. Oh, yeah. Steal. And destroy. She said that goat spirit be bucking against obedience. Come on. You got the goat and the sheep. Come on. I teach that message at least once a year. You got the goat and you got the sheep. Some people say, I don't want to be called no goat. Well, you acting like one. Thank you, woman of God, Yvonne, for that. It's in the Bible. It's a scripture that talks about the goat and the sheep. You got the sheep that obeys the shepherd. And then you got the goat that rebel. But if you're not careful, they both look alike. <laughs> If you take the hair off, oh, y'all not ready. If you take the hair off, if you skin, a, uh, the goat looks just like the sheep. If you take the hair off, one makes one noise and the other one makes another noise. Somebody may say, I'm not no goat. Okay, all right. Might not be a sheep either. <laughs> See, Yvonne, why you put that there? I should have never read it, but it's okay. <laughs> Listen. Somebody say, wait a minute, I'm a goat. Hold on, I need to read that. Go ahead and read it. I'm not going to pull it up for you. That's your homework assignment. And if you see yourself in it, say, Lord, fix it. God, I'm tired of being a goat. <laughs> Bad. No, you need to be a sheep. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Y'all not ready tonight. Okay. Woo. I didn't call you a goat and I didn't call you a sheep. Don't get offended. Amen. You are who you are, who you are, who you are. Okay. Come on. You shall know them by the fruit that they bear. Come on. You look at an animal. You can identify an animal by who they are and what they are. Right? Same thing. Okay. Let's get into the word. Amen. Listen. God said, amen. Am I done, Lord, with the going back? Let me make sure. Yeah, we done. We done. Because the ending of that, amen, when God took me back was the fact that we are still standing. Amen, that, that we are still standing. So many of you, if you look back over your life 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 12 years ago, 5 years ago, amen, and you see the progress. You see the progress, right, in your life. Now, if there's no progress, then something is wrong. There's some error somewhere, which means you have to now go back. And then you're going back. Think about where you messed up all right think about where you messed up and listen most of the time it was because you took a job you weren't supposed to take most of the time it's because you was disobedient come on most of the time it's because a relationship you got in you might have married the wrong person come on we just gonna be honest tonight you gotta be truthful that's how you get delivered okay you might have made the wrong decision all right but even when the Lord took me back, amen, that's why she said friendship, you got to be very careful who you connect with and who you entangle yourself with. That's why God said, be not entangled again. Come on, Miranda. God said, ah, oh, I feel God moving right here. Be, somebody going to get delivered on this. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He said, be not entangled again. Which means there was a time that you got entangled. Come on. He said, "Be." I'm going to say it again till it hits your spirit. Be not entangled again with the yoke 
of bondage. Come on. Bondage is a yoke that is around your neck. And it takes the anointing of God to break it, to destroy it. God bless you, Sister Ashley. Come on. The yoke of bondage is no joke. Because if it's not destroyed, it'll dangle you this way. It'll take you over here. Then it'll take you over there. Come on, because it's a yoke eh, shatanda baha, that is around your neck. And anything that's around your neck, I told the church Sunday. Now God is get, bringing it back to me. Anything that's around our neck has the ability to pull us where it wants us to go. Come on, think about it. So when you hear of yoke of bondage, bondage is not just, oh, I'm in bondage and I'm going to come out and, you know, God going to make a way for me. I'm going to come out of this relationship. I'm going to come out of this marriage. I'm going to come out of this friendship. Okay. I'm going to No, you're going to lose some stuff because the longer you, hey, shatanda baha, I hear you guys. The longer you stay in it, the more you're going to lose. Uh-oh. 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 Holy Ghost just hit a nail right on the head. The longer you stay in it, that's why God says he makes a way of it. Oh, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready tonight. God is delivering right here. He makes a way of escape for his people. But you know what happens? Because of low self-esteem, because of depression, even suicidal thoughts. The enemy will tell you, stay in that friendship, stay in that relationship, stay in that marriage. You know, ain't nobody else going to want you. Well, I come to kill that lie tonight in the name of Jesus. Because <laughs> guess what, ladies? Hallelujah. You about to, your ring finger, it's about to be captivated. <laughs> Somebody is going to see your value. Y'all see this finger I'm touching right here? This finger, Sister Latoya, I felt the ring on my finger for the last three days. This is the engagement hand. This is the left and this is the wedding. All right. So I felt on it and I kept looking at my hand. And sometimes I would go like this and I'm like, let me feel like it's a ring on my finger. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. So I prophesied <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Ah, glory to God that there be many engagements. Ha! Ah, in the name of Jesus, kingdom marriage shall come for you in Jesus' mighty name. Men and women, I prophesy now. Ah, shakeya, namaste. In the name of Jesus, you will be found, ladies. Woo, hallelujah. You will be found. Come on, she said rings are coming. Oh, I felt it for the last three days. And I'm telling you, I kept looking down. I'm like, did I put a ring on my finger by mistake? I'm like, wait a minute. Did I put one of my, because I got a lot of cute rings, y'all. Listen, I got this one right here. Y'all see that little cute heart one? That's a Pandora ring. Y'all see that? So I got this one. I'm like, wait a minute. I, I got it in uh, rose gold. I got it in silver. So, so sister, um, Kim, pastor Kim, I was like, wait a minute. Did I make a mistake and put a ring on my, did I, I said, wait a minute. Did I make a mistake and put a sister to fear? I was like, wait a minute. Hold on. I was like, I knew when I left out the house, I ain't grabbed one by a mistake. Cause I got them upstairs, downstairs, got them in every room. Right. Come on. Even on the, in the bathroom. Come on. somebody. <laughs> Come on. Ladies. Y'all know how we do. We got rings everywhere. Come on. So, hey, Shatanda Baha. But God said, this ring is coming from the one. Woo. Jesus, have mercy. I'm telling you all. Hallelujah. So for the last three days, I kept feeling the ring on my finger. And I was like, okay, God, what you getting ready to do? What you getting ready to do, God? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Somebody would say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive engagement. I receive that I'm going to be found. Come on, ladies. You got to be found. He got to find you. The Bible says he that findeth a wife, oh, he going to search you out. Come on, somebody. He going to search you out. That's why I tell ladies, keep yourself together. Don't be looking all hand me down. Don't be walking outside with a bonnet on your head. Come on, somebody, because you might be at Walmart and he might be there looking like, wait a minute. Oh, that looked like that could be my wife right there. Hold on. Let me find out her name. <laughs> Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. Woo! I feel God moving right here. Hallelujah. And I can see some wives saying, y'all go ahead. 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 I can see the husbands on the live. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. She said the house, the car. She said the husband, the wife, this, and then probably the babies. I ain't got time for that. I'm 45. But I'm just saying. Some of y'all want to have another. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Where that come from? Some of y'all want to have another child. Bless your heart. 
I hear it in the spirit. Some of you want another baby. Sister Kashina, they want babies. I don't know what's going on. I don't want no more kids. I got too much work to do. Ha, huh? glory to God. Hallelujah. I remember I had a dream. Uh-oh. I'm getting ready to reveal something. I'm going to help about five people right here. I had a dream <laughs> that I was preaching, and I was in a whole nother state somewhere, and I had a belly. This was years ago. I was pregnant. I was like, pregnant and preaching? You got to be kidding me. I was married, pregnant, and preaching. I said, okay, God, is that a spiritual baby? You, you telling me I'm going to birth out another baby while I'm already... <laughs> And then I told God when I woke up from that dream, this is going to bless about three of y'all because I see y'all getting married and I see y'all getting pregnant. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, listen. Woo, my God, y'all hitting them hearts. Y'all must want some babies. <laughs> oh, Lord, let me get this word out of my belly, Jesus. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, this one right here, heavy. Ooh, she said, I just want a husband. I know that's right. You just want a kingdom marriage. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, see, just one more. See what I'm saying? See what I'm talking about? Y'all, see, see what I'm saying? See, she said, I received my baby. See, I can't make this stuff up. <sighs> you too, Sister Sophia. She said, I'd be like Sarah. At a you know what? Y'all really want... I know what I heard. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> yes, Sister Mitzi, I do. You know what? I feel it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. This is, hey, hallelujah. This, hey, yes, God, I hear you. This is part of your restoration. I don't know what you lost, but God knows. Mm. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, and I will restore unto you. Woo, hallelujah. She said, I keep seeing twins. Listen, y'all better stop cutting up with these babies now. Some of y'all going to have babies, though. Seriously, you're going to be happily married, and y'all going to have babies. You're going to come back, like, you know, about a year and a half from now and be like, apostle, look, look, look. You're going to show some pictures and all that, and I'm, I'm going to be rejoicing with you. Amen, but I'm just going to be rejoicing with you. That's it. Because <laughs> it ain't going to be me. <laughs> Woo, let's get to the word. Let's get to the word. Let's get to the word. God going to do it for you. Amen. Our babies are gifts from God. Oh, yes, they are, Sister Debbie. But you got to know what you want, what you asking for too now. Let me sip my water on that right there. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. See, my kids, 28, 23, 20, no, 19, and 13. 13, 19, 23, and 28. I don't think so. <laughs> and listen, I nursed all my kids. Nope, sorry. That's all right. No, I'm sorry. I'm not killing y'all dream. I'm just saying. Because I feel babies. I, I feel it. I feel. And I got to say no out of my mouth. So that God can honor my no. <laughs> I ain't crazy. But I know what I feel in the realm of the spirit now. Because some of y'all going to have some more kids. After you get married. <laughs> Come on, Otori. She said, I'm done. Where's the I'm done crew? Can y'all can y'all just... She said, I am 28. Lord Jesus. My oldest son is 28. <sighs> Listen, not only that. Can I, can I just be real? We're in a whole different day now. You got to get the right person to keep your kids. Listen, and my children... I, listen, ain't nobody watching my kids until they could talk. My dad watching my children. He retired early. <laughs> so my daddy watched my kids. <laughs> Till, until they could talk. 
Y'all talking about having these babies. What, what you going to let somebody watch your kid in six months, a year? I don't think so. And nowadays, you can't trust people. See? See what I... I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm de it sounds good. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Daycares are different. Schools are different. Huh? I'm just, I'm, I'm just pausing for a minute. She said, Bru this brought me to tears. Hold on, let me see something. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm just, come on, Sister Sean. She said, yes. You want another one too? You want to get mad? Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let's, let me. We talk about this in church or something. Because I feel babies. I feel like a lot of... Huh? She said, in my mind, I'm done. But I don't want to get my tubes tied until I get married. I know what I feel in the spirit. And I feel a lot of y'all going to get pregnant and have babies after y'all get married. I mean, like in some multiple, but y'all, you got to be ready for that. You got to be financially ready because all it is to stay taking care of your kids and because guess what? A kingdom husband ain't going to want you to be on welfare. this listen kingdom oh i got to break it down lord say break it down kingdom marriage he's not going to want you to be on any type of assistance so you yes lord i hear you he said go here you got to come out of that single mom mentality of i'm going to lean on the system when i have a hard time i'm gonna take him to court when he ain't acting right i'm gonna do no 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 this this is totally different that's why I'm like, I'm feeling babies and I'm, I'm feeling like some of y'all just want them just because. But I'm like, wait a minute, God, do they really understand what all is going to entail? Because if you are called to ministry, how in the world? It look cute. All my kids was real cute. They still cute. I pinch their cheeks all the time. I'm like, you still cute. Mm-hmm. When they was in their little booger stage, I was like, okay, you need to be whooped. Like, we got to break this spirit of disobedience. So that's another thing. You got tear. Okay, you got Jesus. Okay, I'm going to help y'all. Can I just help? I, I don't know who need help, but I, I, I hear it. So let, let, let's, let, let's just help. What time is it? 11.42. So we're going to stay here for about five minutes. All right? So the stages of having a newborn, right? Your body adjusting, whether you have a C-section or you push the baby out. Now, all mine was C-section. Praise God. <laughs> so y'all mothers that pushed them babies out, I commend you. My pelvis was tilted, my cervix was slanted, and the doctors was like, you just can't push your baby out. I was like, yes. <laughs> but I don't know what I was saying yes for because the recovery time of C-sections, oh yeah, I had four to fear. I'm sorry, I'm Sister Latoya. Yeah, never, never, never push one out. Praise the Lord. Jesus, have mercy. And for them to tell me, oh, you can have another one. You can have, I said, wait, huh? Anyway. So, with that being said, <laughs> so I commend y'all. If I had a hat on, do I got a hat around here? I ain't got no hat. I got a jean hat somewhere over there. If I had a hat on, I'd take my hat off to you. I commend y'all. Okay? But let's get to the facts. So, now you got to push that baby out to get a C-section. Do you know the recovery time is totally different? It's totally, totally, totally different. Okay? 
Sister Cardi's laughing. Come on, laugh with me, woman of God. Somebody need to laugh with me. So, so you have to consider and factor all of that in. All right? Now, if you have a kingdom husband, your job is to help him with his assignment. Can I just teach for about four more minutes now? Your job is to help me because you are a help me to him. Now, if he want a baby, that means he's willing to be the protector, the provider. He's willing to do everything to let you stay home to keep this baby and, you know, nurture this baby now. So he's coming with a vision. All right. I'm talking about kingdom men. I ain't talking about these worldly men out here that'll get you pregnant and leave you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a kingdom man, okay? Somebody that's in the kingdom of God. He loves God. He loves you. He loves your children. And if you ain't got no children, he just loves you unconditionally, okay? As Christ loved the church and gave himself up for the church, right? So let's just stay here for a minute. We're going to talk about restoration, but I got, I got to stay here because I feel like some of you need to really understand is this really what you want though? You understand? Because what I'm hearing in the spirit is a mixture. Some of you don't really understand. All right. So let's go here. So now you got, yeah, kingdom man, right? Amen. Different, totally different. Okay. Now, so you got, yeah, mm -hmm, you, you catch that part first. Cause that's, that's the difference. You're not, God is not going to give you a worldly man. He ain't going to give you a man that's going to maybe knock you upside your head. Cause he just, you know, insecure or you know whatever okay god ain't gonna he's not that's not kingdom that's not kingdom so thank you holy ghost some of you need to get that detox that out of your mind that's what the lord is saying you got to detail oh god jesus have mercy this is deep some of you have to detox that out of your mind get that get that frame of a man mind out of your mindset jesus this is deep Okay, so when you when you talk about kingdom, you're talking about a man that knows the word of God, that knows how to pray, that's going to love you unconditionally. That those are all good things, but you have to also make sure that you're ready to be able to be his help me, which means whatever his assignment and his vision is in the earth realm, whatever God has given him, your assignment is to help him. So that means you can't be jealous, you can't be upset, you know, when when he's doing the work of God, and you can't be a nagging woman either. Uh-oh. Come on. The Bible speaks about it in the book of Proverbs. You know, it says it's better, amen, that that man not even be in the house than be in the house with a nagging wife. Why is the Holy Spirit going here? Come on. Because some of you have to understand this. You got to know when a man is kingdom, he's kingdom minded. So, so, so guess what? A kingdom, a kingdom minded man, when he looks at a woman, when he looks at you, he can tell if you kingdom or not. Come on, that's why a kingdom man ain't impressed with, 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 with your body. You might think your body is wonderful. You might go and get all of this stuff or do all of this stuff. To, but a king, hey, a kingdom man is not, he ain't impressed by none of that stuff. You know how many women are probably around him that got nice bodies? Why are we going here tonight? So you, so you think it's just your body? You think it's your looks? You think it's what's in between your legs? That's going to get him. That's going to rope him. That's going to keep him. No. And if he's a kingdom man, he ain't even going to test it out. So if he quote unquote say he's saved and he in church and he touching on you and kissing on you and trying to do the do, then he ain't the one. Because a kingdom man is not going to overstep that boundary. That's why you got to have the boundary up, kingdom ladies. <laughs> maybe we'll teach it a little bit at the women's conference come on amen come on amen there's a level of respect that a kingdom man has for a kingdom woman because he sees thank you holy ghost the lord says he sees the vision far beyond where you are at that moment so you might be out for dinner and he watching you across the table and your every single move and what you say can determine to him the next three to five years. Oh, y'all not ready. Where the kingdom men at that's on this live? I want you to hit those hearts, men. If I'm speaking right, if I'm speaking right, where the kingdom men? And listen, if we just get one to hit a heart, hit a thumbs up. You ain't got to hit a heart. Just hit a thumbs up. Just, just let me know that I'm speaking right. Come on. Come on. Where, where y'all at? Ain't no kingdom men on here. We got 30 people. I know it's some kingdom men. 
I know it's some pastors, some men of God, some somebody that's listening to me. Am I am I speaking correctly? Come on. We at? I think I saw a thumbs up. All right, long as we got one. Come on, ladies. So so when 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 you when you hear kingdom marriage and you get excited, you have to make sure that you are in position and preparation to be found by that kingdom man. All right? So that's that. Amen. Just wanted to hit that real quick. We had to stay there because I kept feeling babies and I kept feeling. And I'm like, okay, God, now I know what I'm feeling in the, in the spirit. And I know what you're showing me in the prophetic. But is this really what exactly you're saying? In other words, we can override. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And we're going to move to the scriptures. We can override the will of God with our will. Just because you had kids and you want another child. You got to make sure that that's exactly what God is saying. Come on. Is that what God is? I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Some of you commented before and said, you know, the light has been shined on the matter. You know why? Because you have to really make sure that that's what God wants. And even when you get with someone and, it, and, it, and it's serious, you have to sit down and talk about these things. You got to talk about finances. You got to talk about how do you discipline kids? You got to. Oh, it's a whole lot of stuff. When you when you get ready to say I do, because you're saying I do to what they believe. See, I do is not just I'm getting married. I look so cute in my dress. My bridal party is lit. Oh, we gonna take some pretty pictures on the steps. No. <laughs> It's bigger than that. Because you can have a destination wedding and get married on the beach somewhere and be just as happy as, as you could be. Come on. Oh, definitely that, Sister Debbie Counseling. You better get counseling. But see, when it's a kingdom, when it's kingdom, it ain't even going to be that hard. It, when it's kingdom, it's not going to even be that hard. Amen. Because he's coming with the right mindset. All right, let's dive into the word. Did y'all get that? Did y'all get that? For those of you that, um, y'all caught that? All right, because I know what I felt in the spirit. I, I still feel some babies, but I don't feel as many now. <laughs> I don't feel as many. I felt the whole lot just, just did. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. What is going on? It was like everybody was pulling. I want a baby. I want a baby. I want a baby. That's what I was feeling, Sister Nidra, in the spirit. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Hold on. Hold on now. God, is this what you're really saying? That's what I felt, Sister Cardi. Oh, you got to understand when you prophetic, you're, you're, I'm open. You understand? I'm open. So I'm going to, God's going to reveal to me exactly what it is that you all need. But mm, I hope you got your answer. I hope those of you got your answer. Amen. Let it be. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord says when it comes together, let it be what God wants. So make sure that you have that conversation with him or her. All right, men, make sure you have the conversation with her. Is that something she wants? Ladies, make sure you have the conversation with your kingdom husband or to be or whatever while y'all courting or whatever. Make sure that you have that conversation. All right? So you don't get your feelings hurt. <laughs> or you two might be in agreement, and then God can move and make it happen. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Let's turn to Joel chapter 2. Amen. I feel a release with that now. So we bless God. Amen. But I want to say this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord said the last thing. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. God said the last thing, even with that, you have to make sure that um, you're, you're taking responsibility of what you already have. Amen. She said, keep God in your marriage. If it's kingdom, God is going to be first. If it's kingdom, he's, he's already first. Amen. He's already first. And, and the kingdom man is going to make make sure that and i'm just I'm, I'm reading your comments sister debbie the kingdom marriage god, god the, the husband is going to make sure that god is first all right he's going to make sure that god is first because he answers to god concerning the wife and then concerning the children somebody shall in that order all right who that was good right there jesus have mercy yes lord i hear you the last thing i want to say also about the kingdom man i have to say this is that not only um is he the priest, the prophet, the pastor of the home over you, ladies? Um, he's also, amen, glory to God, the king, the priest, the pastor, the prophet over you, the children. 
and the entire family, right? So you have to understand that his relationship with God matters. All right. Now it's kind of like Adam in the garden. That's what God always takes me back to when, when he gives me kingdom. When he gives me kingdom marriage, he takes me back to Adam in the garden. Now, first of all, Adam had what? A job. So if he come to you and he ain't got no job, he's not kingdom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> some of y'all like, oh, he ain't got no job. We can spend more time together. Hey, we're going to pause and think about that for a minute. He has to have a job, an occupation, a business, something. <laughs> Come on, Pastor Kim. you going to have to back me on this one because some ladies, they be like, oh, he ain't got the work. And he, are you serious? So how, how do you know his work ethics if he ain't got no job? How do you know how he treat people? Oh, because let me tell you something. Your husband going to come home and tell you about the job. He's going to come home and tell you about your, the employees. He's going to come home and tell you about the boss. And so you're going to learn him through his job. Oh, y'all didn't know that? So if he don't work and he'll never go out and he playing video games all day long, you don't know if that joke is crazy or not. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know his mental. You don't know his, huh? Let, let him go to a family outing and watch how he, you know, deals with the family. Let your family come around and watch how he deals with your family. Oh, you're going to know from the very beginning. If he be like, mm, I don't like your family. I want you around them. Don't go around them. And I, that's, that's insecure. All right. Listen, some of y'all need counseling. We're going we gonna to leave this alone. We're going we gonna, to we gonna come off of this. Right? Because cause these are the red flags. Right, daughter Chanel? I see you hitting those hearts. These are what you call red flags. Red flags. <laughs> red flags. Somebody may say Apostle was well, supposed to be perfect. No. But this type, this stuff right here, no. You don't you don't want to go into it like that. Mm-mm. No, no. You talk about everything, pray about everything, put everything on the table, what you like, what you don't like. Just be honest, be upfront, and be real. Don't be desperate. Who am I talking to? Don't be desperate to the point to where just because somebody come in your life, you take anything. That's for the men and for the women. Because that's what happens sometimes. I see Miranda hitting those hearts. She probably said, Apostle, I've been there. Come on, I think we all have been there, right? Being with people that didn't deserve us. Being with people that just wasn't worthy of our kindness. They wasn't worthy of our time. They wasn't worthy of our money. They wasn't worthy of our appreciation. Come on, we all have been there and we settled because we wanted somebody to love us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mothers, tell your daughters that they're beautiful. Mothers, tell your daughters that they're beautiful. Let me tell you something. My oldest daughter, she already knows she's beautiful. And my oldest daughter is very beautiful. But I tell her all the time, and I told her when she was little. So when the first joker that come and tell you you beautiful, she like, oh, my mom and dad already tell me that. And come on. So tell your daughters every day. You know you are so beautiful. Tell them till they be like, okay, mom, okay, dad, all right. <laughs> come on. You're training them. You're teaching them. So when the first joker come along, because he going to come along now and try to woo her and, and get, you know, come on. Now, I'm being honest. Telling y'all the God honest truth. My, my youngest daughter, she knows she's beautiful. I tell her all the time. You are so beautiful. You a leader. Do you know that? You're not a follower. Huh? You have to pour into your daughters because they're going to be wives one day. Come on. And prayerfully, not just girlfriends for a long time. Come on, some of you can say, Apostle, I can relate to that. Come on, I know some people, they was girlfriends for 20 years and then wind up leaving that guy. Then three months later, they get engaged after they left the person that strung them along. Who am I talking to? Come on, an engagement, it don't take, it don't take long for a kingdom man to marry you either. Come on, who am I talking to? When he's kingdom, he knows what he wants. You got them jokers that's, str that's stringing you along. So if you've been a girlfriend for 10 years and you still say that he yours and you his, 
that that's over <laughs> come on and you giving benefits like no uh-uh no we get ready to exit y'all it's almost 12 o'clock in the morning i gotta give y'all those scriptures amen i gotta give y'all scriptures to tie it all together listen you've been with that joker for five years ten years seven years and he still ain't marry you no 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 because the moment god bless you chanel amen the moment that you leave him, and I'm not telling anybody to leave anybody, okay? Let's just make this clear, all right? I'm not telling anybody to leave anybody. Never did that, and I never will, all right? But when the Holy Spirit is speaking, you have to listen. <sighs> this right here was rough. Whew. We went through a lot of layers just now. <laughs> I know some of y'all feel real free. You're going to go to sleep like a baby tonight. Mm. Ooh, some of y'all going to breathe again. <laughs> Sister Miranda, they need to sow their seed right now. Come on. Ooh, such a release. I feel it. I feel it because some of you were so weighed down and thinking, how's God going to do it? And some of you were thinking that God was not going to do it. Come on, be honest and hit those hearts. And God is telling you he is going to do it. He is going to restore you. All that you lost, the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, palmer worm have stolen from you. You're getting ready to be restored, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you're getting ready to be restored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so with that being said, amen, ask God to prepare you, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Ask God to prepare you for what's next. Amen. Come on, ask him to prepare you for what's next. Because it is getting ready to happen. I told you all, I felt the ring on my finger for three days. And I still feel it. It's not there yet. But I can still feel it. Amen. Because God is getting ready to do something amazing concerning you. Something that has never been done before. Hallelujah. Some, something that has never... Ah, yes, Lord. Something that has never been done before. You are about to experience something that has never been done before in your life. The Lord is saying, even now, I feel the Holy Ghost. Many of you are getting ready to experience something that you've never, ever, ever experienced before. And I'm talking about true love. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a love, amen, that's going to begin to heal you from the inside out, not from the outside in. Glory to God. I'm talking about a love that's going to come genuine, that's going to come pure. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And that love, amen, is going to be reciprocated between you and the person that God is getting ready to put into your life. Hallelujah. That's why you got to be made whole. Amen. That's why even after my divorce, amen, I went through a great separation, a, a long uh, separation period. Amen. Before even the divorce papers was in, amen, between my husband and I, my ex-husband. So what happened, amen, I, we knew the marriage was over and we agreed to go our separate ways. I'm going somewhere. For those of you that either came out of a marriage or you're just coming out of a relationship, you have to remember too that there is a time period of healing that you have to go through. You can't just jump right into something. You close the door to one man and then think God gonna open up a door next week. Don't happen like that because that man has to be completely out of your system. Speak Holy Ghost. Come on. And men, that lady has to be completely out of your system. Come on. Because what's going to happen is a contamination is going to come. Come on. You're going to remember what Billy did, but his name ain't Billy. Come on. His name is John. Come on, somebody. Amen. So Billy got to be, come on, speak Holy Ghost. Billy got to be completely out of your system before John comes. Which means you're going to have to have a period of where Billy ain't got no contact. Billy ain't got no say on your life. Come on, Billy ain't got, listen, you look at a picture of you and Billy and you like, delete. Come on, you hear his name and you like, mm, block. <laughs> You understand? That's old. Hallelujah. Sister Cardi says, speak, speak. Listen, that's old. Come on. She says, same as a widow. All right now. I don't know about widows, but amen. You could, you could, you could teach that and preach that woman of God. I ain't never lose a spouse. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. God ain't, I don't have an anointed for that. <laughs> amen. Come on somebody, but you could probably teach that woman of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So you have to let God close the door. Now, after he closes the door with, with Billy and he going to give you Johnny, right? What, what, what you have to do is there's a period of time that you have to let God heal you. All right. Cause you can't be bitter. You can't be angry at Billy. Even though Billy might've hurt you. Billy might've took your money. Billy might've abused you. He might've mistreated you the whole time y'all were together. Let's just say, right. 
Come on, ladies. Let me help y'all out real quick in the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, you have to let God heal you. Amen. And how do you know you're healed? Because first you disconnect. Then after the disconnect, after the disconnect, now when you hear his name, your heart, there's no attachment, but you're not bitter. You're not angry. You're not upset. Okay, and so a lot of women and even men, they never go through the healing process. It's like when you hear the person's name, you upset, you angry, you like, oh, I just, you know, I can't believe they did that to me. Or, you know, I can't believe that, you know, they still owe me this amount of money. You can name it. You can, you know, it's, it's just you don't, you won't take them out of a box. Amen. And so that's how you know you have healed when you hear their name and you can be okay with it. You got the spirit of peace upon you. That's when, God, that's when you know God has healed you, all right? Because what's going to happen is you may have to talk to Johnny about Billy. But if Johnny comes into your life a week later after you left Billy, guess what's going to happen? Y'all know how the conversation going to be? You're going to be talking to Johnny about Billy and everything he did to you. Everything, because it's, ah, shake, anamasake. He kind of namashande, yes, Lord. It's still in your spirit. It's still in your spirit. You never forgave him. You never got healed from him. So God don't work like that. Can y'all put that in the comments? The God that we serve when it's kingdom, it don't work like that. But when it's you, oh, it works like that. Come on. And somebody can say, I've, I've been there. All right? So God don't work like that. Amen. He's going to give you time to heal. Hallelujah. And even in your time of healing, then he's going to let you love on yourself. Come on. Because you can't be a kingdom woman to that kingdom man and you got all kinds of stuff going on. Come on, you're going to have to be secure within yourself and who God has called you to be. All right, that doesn't mean you got to be some super strong woman either. Amen, because men don't like women that's super strong. Come on, they like women that are submissive, women that can submit. Come on, come on. See, that, yes, Lord, I hear you. God is even grooming some of you even when it comes to leadership. If you can't submit to leadership, then how are you going to submit to a husband? Huh? I don't care if your pastor is a female or a male. You should be able to submit to authority. Because that's what your leadership is. Authority. <laughs> Come on. So, so how you waiting for kingdom or wait? Oh. How you waiting for a husband or vice versa? You waiting for a wife and you can't submit to authority. You can't submit to leadership. It all works the same. Because God is in the midst of it all. Amen. Because guess what? That kingdom. Yes, Lord, I hear you. That kingdom man is even looking to see how you submit to authority in your ministry. Oh, you didn't know that? He wants to see if you a giver. You didn't know that? Because you got to remember he's kingdom. So he's looking for his kingdom spouse. If you stingy and you uptight and you don't pay your bills and you don't clean your house and you don't know how to cook. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me hide my face on that one. That's why some of y'all need counseling. Listen, it's okay. I'm not coming at you. I'm being honest. I'm speaking what God has given me to speak to you. She said, wow, on Instagram. Because it, it's in the building. It, it's, it's right here. Amen. Come on, let me hide my face real quick. Y'all got me, intercessors? Come on. Come on, Debbie says, this is so true. Facts indeed. Y'all got me real quick. I'm going to hide my face just real quick, just for a minute. Sorry. Sorry, not Sorry. Y'all still there? <laughs> I'm so serious. It's the truth anyhow, okay? Can't keep a clean house, can't cook, don't know how to pray, can't keep the kids together. You just all over the place. You falling apart. You just, uh, he gonna say, okay, that's a task. I need to help me. I don't need, oh, uh, Jesus, have mercy. That's a task. So when he's kingdom, his mindset, thank you, Holy Spirit, is looking at it as, can she help me or do I have to help? All right, I think we can move on. <laughs> or, or does he have to help you? Are you another project? Oh. You know how many kingdom men had projects before you, before you came along? That's why he's still single. And that's why he may be still looking. Make sense? Come on. Because if God said there shall be kingdom marriages, these ain't kids I'm talking about. We're not children. I'm 45 years old. <laughs> Come on. So that means he done been around the mountain. I done been around the mountain. We done been through some stuff. He done been through some stuff. Come on, somebody. You got to catch the revelation. 
Come on. Right? Amen. Come on. Y'all done been through some things. But see, when he's... Hey, Shatan Nabaha. When this man is coming, he's serious. That's another thing. When he's coming, he's serious. A kingdom man, he, he ain't playing no games. Shooting straight from the hip, telling you exactly what he wants. And he's watching and observing also. Write that down. Y'all got it? All right. You ain't write it down. Watch the replay. God says, and I will restore. And I will restore. I have to be an asset, not a liability. Come on. You called it, evangelist. There it is. You know how many women are, are liabilities and not an asset? And then the brothers, they just like, where, where's my help me? Where's, where's my rib? Come on. Where's the one that's going to make this make sense for me? Hallelujah. Come on. In the name of Jesus. And when you start in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. And when you start praying for the men and men of God as a whole, and I'm not talking about just for your husband, but when you start praying for the kingdom men, you get greater revelation of what they need. You get a you get a better understanding of what he needs because you are the help me. I took you all back to Adam because it was the same thing in the garden. Come on. Hallelujah. God put Adam to sleep. Amen. And he said, hey, glory to God. And when he woke up, there was Eve. And he said, this is your help me. Not help me. This is your help meet. She's going to help you meet <laughs> everything that you need for the vision I've given you, Adam. Which means she's coming equipped. God bless you, Miranda. Amen. I speak a hundredfold increase on your seed tonight. And that God give you everything that you're asking him for. And that he restore you 100 fold in Jesus name. You see? So when he's coming, women of God, he, listen, he's coming with a vision. He, he's coming with a vision and your job is to help him. I know y'all got it. Y'all got it. All right, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Somebody said, I didn't know all that. I didn't know all that. It's all right. Amen. Because when you know better, you do better. And then not only that, amen. She says in Jesus name, right. Not only do you do better when you know better, you can prepare yourself for what's to come. Amen. You can prepare yourself. God bless you, Cynthia Marie. Amen. All right. God says, and I will restore unto you the years that you have lost. Amen. So this is Joel chapter 2, verse 25. I'm read 25 through. Let's go to um 29. All right. We're going to read 25 to 29. All right. And it reads, and I will restore unto you the years. That the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And all, I'm sorry, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Amen. So something great is taking place in this passage of scripture because if you go all the way back to Joel chapter 1, it talks about the destruction that hit, all right? So there was a destruction that had hit the southern kingdom of Judah without any warning, all right? So that's just like many of you. The last storm you came out of, it happened without warning. Listen, what you just endured, it happened without warning. Come on. If something took place in your life that happened without warning, right? That's how you know. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord says it's an indication that he's about to restore you. Amen. Because destruction has hit. One thing about God and his people, when, when, we, when we go through disaster, when we go through detrimental situations, that's not time for us to break. That's not time for us to fold, but that's the time for us to trust in the Lord our God with all of our heart. According to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. He says, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So if you go to Joel chapter 1, you will see how everything 
Amen. The locusts have come and eaten everything. It was a disaster that hit. And sometimes when I teach this, the Lord gave me this revelation. I'm going to give it to you. Sometimes when I teach this, it's so powerful. And I want you to read it because everybody was affected. It was the obedient ones that was affected in the book of Joel chapter one and two. And it was also the disobedient that was affected. All right. So in this, in this um, era, what took place, amen, in the um, kingdom of Judah, you have to understand that it hit everybody. So every, listen, the locusts came and ate everything, all right? Whether you was obedient or disobedient, that's powerful. When I read that, it, it blew my mind. And you can read it for yourself, amen? But there were certain things that they had to do, all right? So even verse 14 says, sanctify a fast, call for a solemn assembly, gather the elders together and all of them, <clears throat> all the inhabitants and in the land of the house of the Lord, your God and cry unto the Lord. So there are times that, amen, your, your life is in disaster. You got to get to a low place and you got to pray. Come on. I'm at Joel chapter one, verse 14. Amen. And sometimes you got to call for a fast. All right. And then chapter two says, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain and let the inhabitation of the land tremble. All right. So God was pulling his people back to him, even in the midst of the suffering. She says it's happening now. Thank you, Sister Debbie, for the confirmation. See, that's what God is doing. Even in the midst of your suffering, he's always pulling you back to him. Come on, it's not over until God says it's over. Come on. And then it goes down to talk about the chariots. Amen. It says, and the noise of the chariots on the top of the mountain shall they leap. And like the noise of the flame and the fire that devoureth the stubble. And a strong people shall set a battle array. So now, as you can see, they were going through and they were losing some things. Just like many of you. Come on. And they were losing some things, but they were also coming back to the Lord. Amen. And verse 11 says, and the Lord shall utter his voice. Amen. Before his army. So now God is now speaking unto them. Amen. Now there's some movement after they have lost everything, after the locusts have come and eaten everything. And that's what we have to understand as the body of Christ. God will never leave us nor forsake us. The Bible says he'll be with you even until the ends of the earth. So now we get to verse 25, even before you get to 25, let's go up a little bit. 21 says, fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things for you. And that's verse 21. And then he says, be not afraid, you, you beasts of the field. He said, for the pasture of the, of the wilderness do spring up. Come on. So something great is getting ready to happen before you get to verse 25. And God is saying, even in this passage of scripture, it talks about the springing up. It talks about fruit. If you read in verse 22. It says the fig tree shall bring forth fruit and the fig tree and the vine tree shall yield their strength. Come on. Now I'm in verse 23 and it says, and be glad ye children of Zion. Come on. You got to get to a place of gratitude. You got to get to a place to where you be glad. Come on. He says, be glad children of Zion. Mm -hmm. He says, rejoice in the Lord, your God. And this is before you get to verse 25. We rejoice at 25 and we get excited when God says, and I will restore. But you have to understand that many of you are going through your process right now come on you're going through your process right now and it talks about the former rain is getting ready to come and the latter rain shall come in the first month come on and it says and the floors shall be filled with wheat come on that sounds like substance that sounds like increase to me come on in verse 24 and it says the fat amen shall overflow with wine and oil come on somebody shout new oil is also coming in this time of restoration y'all not ready on tonight but it's all right hallelujah because god even talks about the new oil that oh god you can't put old oil amen into a uh, wine skins in other words you can't put old wine amen into wine skin because if you put old wine into a wine skin is going to burst come on hallelujah anything that is new has to require for new oil it has to require for new wine come on somebody see this is oh god hallelujah part of your restoration Say if the Lord, now we get to 25 and it says, and I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. He says, my great army, which I sent among you. Somebody shout, this was God's doing. 
Come on, somebody shout, this was God's doing. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, this was God's doing. See, we have to understand that anytime there's destruction, anytime there's disaster, anytime there's desolation, anytime the bottom has fallen out. Listen, God has a plan. My God, my God. Hallelujah. If you read all throughout scripture, the father has a plan for his people. When he says he'll never leave you nor forsake you, he meant just that. And then the Bible goes on to say, behold, I will do a new thing. Hallelujah. He he said, now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? He says, I'm getting ready to do a new thing in this season of restoration for my people. Ah, glory to God. He said, you haven't seen anything yet. And then the Lord took me to Joel. I'm sorry, he took me to Job. Hallelujah. And we know the story of Job, right? Come on, I'm almost through. I'm almost out of your hair. Give me about five more minutes. Glory to God. Amen. And then we get to Job. Amen. Job 42 and 10. It says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. My God, my God. And that reminds me of a word that was spoken even to you, Sister Latoya. I see you on Instagram tonight. The Lord has taken me back even to when you came to the church before you joined Sister Latoya. Amen. The Lord has taken me back to the word that was spoken over you. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. But when God give it to me, I have to say it again. The Lord said he gave you this word of restoration. But you had to lose some more things. Hallelujah. He gave you this word of restoration, Latoya, when you first came to the ministry. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's like lately you've been saying, God, what else can I lose? What more can I lose? I done lost everything. Hallelujah. I, 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 what, what else can I lose? Glory to God. Hallelujah. God says, even in the midst of this Latoya, the Lord says for me to tell you, he has kept your mind. That's like many of you. It's like you lost some things that was tangible. You might've lost a house. You might've lost a car. You know, you might've lost um, your joy. Come on, somebody, whatever you lost, God says, I'm going to give it back, but I'm going to give it back to you now double. One thing about Job, amen, he could not curse God and die, even though his wife told him. And some of y'all know the passage of scripture with Job. Amen. Job was an upright man. Come on, Job. Amen. He was a noble man. Listen, Job was known by the people. Hallelujah. But not only that was Job known. Amen. Job, he was, he was righteous before God. Amen. If you go to Job chapter one, it talks about him. Amen. Just like many of you before the storm, before your situation, you weren't bothering nobody. You weren't saying nothing to nobody. Then here comes the situation. Here comes the storm, right? So the Bible says, amen, there was a man in the land of us and his name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And he was one that feared God and a screwed evil. A screwed evil means he turned away from any evil that was around him. Job was blameless. Can somebody say that? Job was blameless. Amen. And then he had born um, seven sons and three daughters, right? So he had 10 children. His substance was 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camel. He had 500 oxen. He had 500 she asses, which are donkeys. Amen. And he had a very great household, which means he had a beautiful home. Amen. That was full of a lot of space. Come on. And this man, amen, was great of all men. He was the greatest of all men of the East. All right. So Job was very well known in the community. Come on. So for this man to lose everything, can you imagine the people that were looking at him like, wait a minute, Job, you are supposed to be an example. Right. Verse four says that his sons went on a feast in their houses and every one of his um, in that day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Let's go down a little bit. Verse six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also with them. Listen, verse seven. And the Lord said unto Satan, where, where have you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, I'm going to and fro in the earth. Come on. And from walking up and down in the earth. That's what Satan said to God. And then the Lord said unto Satan, have you not considered my servant Job? Jesus, have mercy. That's verse eight. He says, have you not considered my servant Job? Now let's stop right here. Hold on. So you mean to tell me that God and Satan was having a conversation? And because Job was so perfect before God and he was noble before God and he was righteous before God, God asked the devil, have you not considered him? Out of all people, have you not considered him? 
Come on. He's perfect. He's upright. And he feareth me. Come on. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do if Job fear God for naught? So in other words, wait a minute. But, the, but, but does Job fear you, God, for nothing? See, hmm. This takes us back to the beginning. God always in our, in these messages that he gives me, if you notice, he starts us out with one thing, but he always takes us around full circle. I gave you all the example of how the ministry started and it took that real yes to God and me having love for God to remain. Come on. It's the same thing with Job. Come on. So the devil asked God, so wait a minute, does he fear you for nothing though? So wait a minute, does, does Job fear you, say, or does Job fear you, God, just because of what you have given him? Mm. Come on, come on. It all ties in. Come on, Minister Hattie. I know you caught the revelation. It all ties in, right? I'm almost done, y'all. Give me two minutes. It all ties in. See, we can't just fear God or love God because of what he gives us. We have to still keep that fear of God even when we lose things. I know, I know, because it's so easy to cross back over and do the wrong thing, right? But you got to still do the right thing. So verse nine says, and Satan answered the Lord and said, does, does Job fear God for nothing? Does he fear you for nothing? In other words, does he just fear you because you've been so good to him? This is what the devil is asking God, the nerve of him, <laughs> right? So verse 10 says, has not thou made a hedge about him? And about his house and about all that is, is on every side. And thou has blessed the work of his hands and his substance and increases in the land. Hold on. So now the devil knew all of this. Satan knew that there was a hedge over Job. Ah, glory to God. Come on, verse 11. He says, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. This is what the devil told God. Saying, listen, if you take everything away from Job, because <laughs> yes, Job is blessed. Come on, let, let, me, let me see some names that's on here. I, I see you, Sister Kashina. Yes, Kashina is blessed. Yes, Sister Latoya is blessed. Come on, yes, Sister Mitzi is blessed. Let me see some of y'all, amen, that are still with me. Yes, Sister Debbie is blessed. Come on, yes, Sister Latoya is blessed. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Whitney is blessed. Yes, Sister Cynthia Marie is blessed. Come on. Hallelujah. But are you just blessed? Amen. And you only bless God when you're blessed. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 11 says here, he said, but put, God said, listen, but put your hand to him. I'm sorry. The devil said, but now put your hand to him and see that he would not curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that you have is in thy power and only upon himself. Put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth in the presence of the Lord. Listen to this. Verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine. And there his oldest brother was in the house. And there comes a messenger to Job. The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding beside them. Let's go down a little bit. Come on. All right. And all... At, I'm sorry, verse 22. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. So now Job is about to be sick. Now Job is about to lose everything. Come on. And verse 2, I'm sorry, chapter 2, it says, And again there came the day, and the sons of God, when they had presented themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also with them to present themselves to the Lord also. Verse 2, and I'm in Job 2 and 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence hast thou come? And Satan said, I'm going to and fro, and I'm walking up and down. And the Lord says, had you not considered my servant Job? And he's there in the earth. He's a perfect man, an upright man. So it goes on to say the same thing. And then it says now in, in verse four, this is important. So Satan answered the Lord and said unto him, um, said unto to the Lord, um, skin for skin. Yes, all that the man has will give, will he give his life? For it. Come on. So now the devil has permission to come against his body and he's still tempting the Lord. Satan is still tempting the Lord saying, if I touch his body, you have lifted the hedge, but I promise you, if I touch his body, he's going to curse you. And that's when the Lord is saying, he's not going to curse me. He's not going to curse me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's not going to curse me. Let's go down to verse nine. And then said his wife unto him, do as thou still remain 
um, your integrity. She said, curse God and die. But Job said unto her, thou speakest as one who is foolish. You are a foolish woman. Come on. She, he said, what? He said, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? See that? See, Job understood that with the good is also going to come evil. Are y'all not ready? Job understood. Oh, this is good right here. I know some people don't went to sleep, Sister Kashina. They ain't even with us no more. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Anytime there's good, evil is also going to be present. Y'all not ready, but it's all right. I'm going to continue. Amen. It's in, in verse 10 goes on to say, and in all of this, did not Job sin with his lips? He still didn't sin against God. He still refrain from cursing God. Come on. Now he says in chapter three, he says, after this, open Job his mouth and he cursed the day that he was born. So now Job is going through the process. See, just like many of you, you're going through the process. But instead of Job cursing God, he said, I just cursed the fact that I was already born. I don't even know why I was born. I'm going through this. I done lost my children. I done lost my cattle. I done lost my sheep. I done lost everything that I had access to. Listen, I'm not the man that I was in the community. Now they're looking at me like, you know, shameful. And so Job had to endure all of this. Come on. Now you go all the chapters later. All the chapters later. Let's go. Let's go. Now we have 14. Amen. Come on, somebody. Now he says, amen, in, in, verse, in chapter 14, he says, man that is born of a woman a few days is full of trouble. So now Job is going through. And he like, wait a minute. First, I cursed the day I was born. Now a man that is born of a woman ain't nothing but trouble. Come on here. Now he going through it. And he like, you know what? But he still didn't curse God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He still didn't curse God. Come on. Now you got chapter 32. Let's go to 32. 32 and 1. It says, so these three men had ceased to answer Job because he was righteous. Come on, somebody. Because he was righteous in his own eyes. So now you got the three friends that are coming against Job. They're like, wait a minute, Job. What did you do? Hold on. We your friend, Job, but we know you did something. Something happened somewhere, Job. You, you have to explain this to us. Amen. So if you continue to read in 33. 34 it goes on to talk about the different friends and what they did all right and their names are in there also come on so now you get the 42 come on we're gonna go to 42 we're just going right along now job is still suffering he's still suffering so now you get the 42 and let's read 42 and 1 42 and 1 says now job answered the lord and said i know that thou canst do anything mm, jesus have mercy and that now and that no thought can be for for holding from thee so in other words you know everything god i can't do nothing right now all right let's go down a little bit let's go down a little bit all right let's go down to verse eight he says therefore take unto you now seven bullocks seven rams and go to the servant go to my servant job and offer up to him a burnt offering and my servant job shall pray for you come on so his friends now had to give a sacrifice see that so a lot of times we preach and teach this and we'll say, you know, Job just prayed for his friends. Uh-uh, uh-uh. They had already said that Job had did something wrong to receive these boils, to receive sickness, to receive the fact that he lost everything. Somebody shout, I didn't do nothing. Somebody shout, I didn't, I didn't do nothing to deserve this. Come on, come on. Listen, you got to say it out of your mouth. I, I didn't do anything. Come on. I still serve God. I still love God. I was still faithful to God. Come on. It's only a few of you left. I know it's, it's 30 viewers, but ain't nobody saying nothing, but it's all right. Maybe they sleep. I'm telling y'all they sleep. They're going to watch the replay tomorrow. We almost through. Amen. And so now you got the three friends. All right. And now the Bible says in verse 10, it says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. See, you never know when your time of freedom is going to come. Listen, listen. You never know when your time of freedom is going to come. You just have to endure hardship like a good soldier. You just have to endure. I know that's probably the best part of this message right here. <laughs> and I've been talking for over two hours. Come on, somebody. This is the best time. Amen. This is the time that you have to endure hardship like a good soldier. You about to be restored. Whitney, you about to be restored. You're about to be restored, Sister Latanya. Restoration is getting ready to hit your house. Hallelujah. Restoration is getting ready to hit your mind. Come on. Restoration is getting ready to hit your body. Ha. Hallelujah. And God says, listen, just as God turned the captivity for Job, he's going to do the same thing for you. 
And the Bible says, and when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice. Can somebody put in the comments double? For those of y'all that's still up, can you put double? Come on, can you put double for my trouble? Hallelujah. Can you put double for my trouble? I feel a release right here. Can you put double for my trouble? Come on, somebody. Double for my trouble. Yes, Lord. Double for my trouble. Write it until it hits your spirit. Say it until it hits your spirit. Come on. He's about to give you double for your trouble. The Bible said that God gave Job twice as much as he had before. Come on. So if he lost 10 children, that's 20 children. That's for those of you that's trying to have another baby with your kingdom marriage. <laughs> Come on. It all ties in. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. He lost everything, but God gave him double for his trouble. Hallelujah. So we thank God for restoration. Come on. We thank God for his promises and his word. Come on. We thank God. Hallelujah. For the prophetic word tonight where God says, and I will restore unto you. God is speaking unto you as his people, his sons and his daughters. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to restore unto you all that you lost. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, get ready because what he's about to give you, you've never experienced it before. Glory to God. And hey, hallelujah. God says this time when I give it to you, it's going to be like you never lost anything. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your mind is going to be so renewed to the point to when he blesses you this time. Can somebody put in the comments this time? Woo, hallelujah. Can you put in the comments this time? Come on. In the name of Jesus, can you put in the comments this time? When God blesses me this time. Ah, hallelujah. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. Hallelujah. It's going to be complete restoration. Can you put in the comments, complete restoration in the name of Jesus. The number for completion is seven. I have to give you all this and I got to give you what God gave me. Some of you are going to be challenged tonight, but it is the Lord. Amen. Somebody shout this time. <clears throat> the number of completion is seven. Hallelujah. It's going to bless about five of you also. Because there's more revelation in the end part of the message. Seven is the number of completion. Amen. The Bible says on the seventh day, God rested. Right? Whoo, hallelujah. Those of you that have been fighting the, the, the enemy. Those of you that have been in, in intense, thank you, Holy Ghost, warfare. I thank God for strength right now. Amen. To, to, to finish this message. Those of you that have been in intense warfare. God rested on the seventh day. The Lord says, yes, God, I hear you. He says in this season of complete restoration, not only is he going to restore you everything that you lost, but double. He said, I want you to rest this time in my presence. And as you're resting, Sister Nidra, I want you to rest and win the battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He says, yes. Ah, glory to God. My son, my daughter, I need you to rest now and win. Ah, glory to God. Can I get somebody to put that in the comments? I told you all it was going to be real good. I needed y'all to stay with me to the very end because that right there, hallelujah, God is giving you rest. Hey, Shatanda Baha, because of what he's about to place in your hands is bountiful, it's plentiful. Come on, in the name of Jesus, the assignment, the responsibility that's getting ready to come, glory to God, is going to be greater than what you can even think or imagine, but it's going to bless your socks off. So now you got to rest and win. Woo, hallelujah. You got to rest. Oh, God. It's about 25 of you. You need to plant a seed tonight with a seven in it. The Lord said seven. Hallelujah. Some of you, it's a $70 seed. Amen. Why a $70 seed? Because God, hallelujah, now he's pressing upon your heart. Amen. To be more of an about, a bountiful giver because of what he's about to place in your hand. Many of you, this is not something that is, that is like little. Amen. This is not something that is mediocre. This is not something that, listen, God said, this is not something small, Sister Latoya. Amen. This is something big. And that's why your seed tonight of 70, hallelujah is going to release the abundance my god that is attached to your restoration i can't get no help on tonight hallelujah but i challenge those of you mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That, oh, that you received this word of restoration, that you will plant your seed of 70 tonight. Hallelujah. 70. I heard it very clear before God gave me this word. Hallelujah. Before I got on the live. Hallelujah. God said a seed of 70. Some of you is going to be a challenge. Amen. But hear God on tonight. 
Hallelujah. Some of you, it's going to be a challenge, but hear God on tonight. The seed of 70. He said, complete restoration. Mm. In the name of Jesus, complete restoration. He said also what's attached to this seed, amen, of 70. God's going to give you sweet rest. Glory to God. He's going to allow you to, oh God, to have sweet rest in this season of your restoration. Hallelujah. As he's preparing you. Come on, somebody. The, the amounts, um, the ways to sow, amen, is at the bottom. You have Cash App, you got PayPal, you got Zelle, and you have our ministry website. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus, hear God tonight and obey and watch God do it for you. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for the moving of your spirit, Father God. We bless your holy name right now, God. Father, I thank you for it. Yes, Lord. Those that are going to obey your word on tonight, not just hear your word. But those that are going to be doers of your word in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that it's a handful, oh God, that are going to receive the manifestation of this word. We know it's only going to be a handful, oh God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that are going to be blessed by this word. But Lord, I thank you for the release on tonight. I thank you even now, God, that you have blessed your people abundantly once again. Father God, I say thank you even for your anointing that was released on this broadcast, Father, even on YouTube and even on Instagram tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. I say thank you for what you have done in this atmosphere, in this space on tonight, for our lives will never be the same. Thank you for the outpouring, even of the teaching, oh God, for the women. And even the teaching, oh God, for the men as they prepare themselves for their kingdom mate in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God, as they prepare their hearts, hallelujah, to even be healed and to walk through the healing process so that you can give them the new, so that you can grant unto them the new, so that their life will never be the same. Father, we thank you. Yes, God, hallelujah, that we have entered into a season, hallelujah, of rest and win. Glory to God in the name of Jesus, for we shall rest in your presence, oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, not just on tonight, hallelujah, but even when you tell us to rest, and to close our eyes just for a moment, whether it be for 30 minutes, whether it be even taking a nap throughout the day, oh God, you are causing us, hallelujah, to quiet our spirit in this season. You are causing us to rest and to win the victory. Lord, we thank you even now that as we obey your word, hallelujah, that you are going to cause us to triumph over our enemies. My God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, for the weapons have formed, but they will not work. My God, in the name of Jesus, for the weapons have formed against your men, against your women of God, but they will not work in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you now and I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus. I seal even this word in the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Oh, God, that you are moving mightily by your spirit concerning your people. I thank you even now, God, for turning ah, hallelujah, the verdict around. Yes, Lord, I hear you. For many have heard no, but God, they're getting ready to hear yes. My Lord, in the name of Jesus, many have heard no. Oh, God, but they're getting ready to hear the word yes. So, Father, I thank you that the complete restoration shall begin to manifest tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, it shall happen suddenly. It shall happen quickly for your people. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for doing it now. Father God, I glorify you for doing it now. Jesus, I bless your holy name. Oh, God, Holy Spirit, continue to have your way. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that I do pray. Amen and amen. To God be all of the glory. Listen, we're going to exit on YouTube first. I got a couple announcements I need to make. Then we're going to exit on Instagram. And then I'm going to stay on Facebook Live just for a minute. But I want to say to you all, to God be all the glory. Listen, I'm ready for my restoration. I don't know about nobody else. Amen. I'm even sowing my seed of 70 on tonight. Hallelujah. I said, I'm sowing my seed of 70 on tonight, Sister Latanya, because I'm telling you, for the last three days, my finger, listen, it felt like I had a ring on my finger. And I'm saying, what is going on here? And I kept looking down at it. I'm like, I know I didn't put a ring on my finger now. My like, God, what are you doing? What is going on here? Come on, somebody. And even as I teach my members, it's okay to ask God a question. But never, ever question what God is doing. I'm going to say that one more time for those of you in the back <laughs> that cannot hear me clear enough. Listen, never question what God is doing. In other words, it's okay to ask him questions. Amen. She said, I'm ready for my restoration. She sold her seed of 70. Amen, Miranda. I know that's right. I know that's right. In Jesus name. Listen, it's okay to ask God a million questions. 
but never, ever, ever question what God is doing. Oh, that's so powerful. He gave me that about 10 years ago. Bless my socks off. Amen. Hallelujah. And I've been holding on to it ever since. So it's okay to ask him questions, but never, ever question what God is doing. Amen. We thank God for what he's about to do in your life. I thank God for the complete manifestation of restoration in your life. In Jesus name. We're going to exit on YouTube. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.